Hello, everybody. I think I'm ready to get started. Thank you, Chaos Vinius slash RJ Chaos. Good luck. Let's chat a little. Oh, I guess, uh, in terms of Phoenix Ray, we completed the first trial, technically, of Episode 2, but there's more than one trial. So we are now moving on to the murder investigation. So we'll get started in just a moment. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. Oh, this is the soundtrack. <clears throat> okay, so the only thing I know about this upcoming chapter is that there is an achievement we still have not achieved for this particular case. So I have five Maybe six things I have to look at in investigation mode. That's all I know about the upcoming trial. We'll get an achievement on that. Let's see. Episode 2, The Stolen Turnabout, Part 3, Investigation. That looks correct. October 13th, 3.02 p.m. Brenton Company Lull Offices. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all. Poor Mr. Delight got arrested again. Well, supposedly, Mr. Delight was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No way, Jose! I don't buy it. But the one who proved that Mr. Delight was there! It's Mr. Nick himself! At least from what I can understand. Looks like you did too good of a job this time, Nick. Welcome to Parameter. Hope you're doing well. Um, uh, uh... Well, how about we get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I can head back to Crane Village for a while if that's alright. Oh, please. I beg of you. Sure, but why? I'm gonna bring the sacred urn back to... and have some people take a look at it. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with... No, Mystic Maya, you should say... You should stay here. I want you two to spend some special quality time together, full of love and happiness. Rose is so caught up in her fantasy, she forgot there's a murder to solve. They get her and given to Pearls. Now remember, no fighting, okay? He's gone. Okay, Nick. Time to get going on this murder investigation. I'm gonna present the badge. Oh, you still got that badge, I see. Huh? Well, I'm a lawyer, aren't I? Yeah, but I guess I just didn't think you'd keep on being one for this long. It's true. I don't know how we're still calling ourselves a lawyer. We've canonically had, like, literally six cases. You have to admit, I had some close brushes with death because of your job. I failed to see how being a lawyer... Oh, no. Chad, we're gonna read the sentence as it is written, then we will correct said sentence. Quote Phoenix, I fail to see how being a lawyer is B more dangerous than channeling dead people. Hmm. I think he means... I fail to see how being a lawyer is... more dangerous than channeling dead people, or is being more dangerous than channeling dead people? I don't know. Go with whichever you feel fits the sentence better. Uh, indeed. Yeah, this this game has had some really weird translations. It seems like even in the update of this game, there's stuff that just doesn't make sense. Sometimes it is B, chat. Sometimes it is B. What to do? So, what do we do now? Isn't it obvious? We should get out there and investigate the murder. Well, first, we need to find out exactly where KB Security is located. Hey! Why don't we ask Miss Delight? She should know. Besides, I want to ask her some stuff about motorcycles. Motorcycles? You're not thinking of getting one, are you? I'm not the same little Maya who used to be happy with her dinky little bike, Nicky boy. Ugh. Speaking of asking around, I had a few questions of my own for Mr. Delight. Okay, well, let's make sure to go to the de detention center, too. Sacred urn. Must be relieved we got the sacred urn back, huh? 
You bet. Oh no. <laughs> that was... That was a classic Tales of Fantasia right there. I feel like I'm having PTSD from that game. Whenever somebody says that exact phrase, not a good sign, chat. Anyway, let's get back on track. But there's something a little different about it. Huh? Don't call me. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, take a look at this. It clearly says I am on the urn in the poster. The urn we got that says Amy like it always used to. Oh yeah, you're right. Plus the vase has pink splotches on it now. I'm sure they weren't there before. Maya doesn't know, but one year ago, the urn was broken. The repair accidentally turned Mystic Ami's name into I Am. That repair was one mechanically unskilled little pearls. But still, I don't remember ever seeing pink splotches on it. Is it possible the urn is a fake? I'm sure pearls will find out about that once she gets back to Korean Village. Yeah, I suppose. Now that I think about it. I haven't been back to Korean Village in a long time. Let's get back Korean Village. So, I guess people still go to Korean Village to do their training, right? Yeah? You want to become a spirit medium, you need to undergo severe training. So, why haven't you been training lately, Maya? Well... Lately, I've been thinking of heading to a channeling dojo to do just that. A uh, channeling dojo? Huh? Uh, sounds pretty serious, whatever that is. If you're going to train, you have to be serious. Otherwise, real tragedies can happen. What happened last year still bothering you? She dot dot dots. That murder in her village it happened because the power of channeling was misused. The medium uses the Korean technique, she temporarily loses her own will. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, when an especially strong spirit is summoned, the spirit medium can get taken over and even be forced to commit terrible crimes. What's worse, in those cases, the spirit medium has no memory of what happened. Bang, indeed. That murder. It wasn't your fault, Maya. You know that, don't you? Suppose not, but... I guess I'm still a bit shaken up, that's all. Sounds like being the Master of Karain is gonna be heavy responsibility. Hmm... I guess I go to Damas' hideout first? I don't think... I mean, it's possible we could get a clue for a conversation by going back to the detention center, but I feel like that's something we'll circle back to once we have evidence. October 13, Mass to Mass hideout. Oh, Nikki boy, Maya. Miss Delight. All I wanted to do was help my dear Ronnie. Yeah, but I guess it ended up hurting his case. Don't say that, Nick. She doesn't need your help beating herself up. Hey, Nikki boy, please. Please help Ronnie. He's not a killer. I swear, my Ronnie wouldn't hurt a fly. Alright. Look around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? Oh, I'm so happy. I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I... I don't know what I can do to help anymore. I know what idea Miss Delight had such a vulnerable side. Alright, so now I think I gotta re-examine this. One of the items I have to check. Hmm. Thing looks vaguely familiar. Oh, I know. The fishbowl. One upside down one, anyway. I think it's a helmet. An alien helmet. Okay, so I think this is the same conversation as before, but it was only listed to investigate at this phase for whatever reason. Alright, so I don't know if this is any different, so we'll read this portion. Oh, that. Honey brought that home one day. Guess one of his friends from work if you could have it. It's a Space Ranger uniform. I've never seen Ronnie happier in his whole life. I don't think we got that comment before. Oh man, now I want one too. What if KB Security was in charge of security at the event from the from that old case? Yeah, okay, so that's new. We saw them talk about the alien transceiver before, but I guess it didn't count earlier. Uh, I think that's all I need to look at for now. 
talk to Ronda Blade. Or talk about the topic, Ronda Blade, excuse me. Listen carefully, Nicky boy. My Ronnie would never, ever kill anyone. It's just not in him. I don't think he would either, Nick. Yeah, but you have to admit, he's got a bit of a temper to him. Not that hard to imagine him snapping and screaming, Please die! He would never say that. Anyway. Miss Delight, he might not be a killer. But he's still going around saying that he's a thief. I already told you. That's just a fantasy for him. Miss Delight, I hate to say it, but you're the one living in a fantasy world. What? How dare you say that to me, Nicky boy? I know everything about my Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. Oops. Ronnie isn't the thieving type. He's so honest that he wouldn't even sneak a nap. He's so honest he would even steal a glance. A thief? Ha! Huh. The very idea. Hmm. Guess I just don't get it. Huh? It what? Just can't understand how they could be so different. And yet, be such a happy couple. Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Nicky boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? It was love at first sight. For me, anyway. What? B for you? Detective at me. I hate these kinds of people more than anything. Um, you mean ace detectives? No, I'm fine with ace detectives. Oh, then you must mean thieves. No, they're all right, too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be ace detectives. There's nothing I hate more than cowardly men. She doesn't like cowardly men. Goes out with the current person that literally can't speak up at all? Question mark. By the way, why did you go to Detective Atme's office anyway? Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more anxious. I went there to try to find out more about the real criminal. Oh no, that's dangerous talk right there. The real criminal? Yes, obviously the real Master Mask is not my Ronnie, right? Y yeah? And Detective Atme knew more about Master Mask than anyone else. They mentioned him on the Great People Around Town segment on TV. So then, you went there to ask him some questions? That's right. I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. His secretary said, The Ace Detective isn't in right now. But I forced my way past her and in into his hideout. Exactly call that office of his a hideout. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Oh, don't even talk about the dot the bag. I'm still annoyed about that. I can't move on from the bag if they keep mentioning it, Chad. It's too soon. It was such a stupid plot point. Yes, we saw that bag there last time. I know. There's nothing lower than someone who would try to pin a crime on someone else. Oof. Big oof given two cases ago with Phoenix Wright where we literally tried to do exactly that. KB Security. Mr. Light, do you know about KB Security? Don't be silly, of course I do. That's where my Ronnie works. So she thinks he still works there, huh? And yet, we know what we heard today. Ma, don't tell me you didn't know. Rondelite was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Ron quit. He doesn't work there anymore. Looks like Miss Delight doesn't know. KV security is only about 20 minutes away. My motorcycle, that is. Larry told me it takes 30 minutes by car. Well, I have to admit I tend to fly pretty fast on my bike. I get to KV security that fast. Are you sure you aren't literally flying? Why don't I give you a ride sometime? Or better yet, how about now? 
Um, uh, no, I'll pass. Thanks. Oh, why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves? Uh huh. What a scaredy cat you are, Nick. Miss Delight told us about the location of KB's security. Okay. Let's head over there right away, Nick. Let's ask about love at first sight. Um, so was it really love at first sight when you first met Mr. Delight? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronnie saved my life. Saved your life? I was at work one day when two robbers suddenly rushed in. Well, I'm not the kind to just curl into a little ball in a corner, so I fought back. R robbers Yes, they took me hostage. I was so frightened, she says with a smile for some reason. They were both carrying these huge knives, and I broke down into tears, she says, smiling for some reason. Yeah, I would too if I were in that situation. Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Delight come running to save you? Yes, exactly. Remember, he looked so handsome in that guard uniform of his. That is... That is an image. <laughs> I almost died. Smiley faces Dango. Welcome, Dango. I... I have a... I have a lot of questions about the art that we're looking at here, chat. I don't like to be, like, a huge critique and all, but, like... They could have drawn the thugs as almost anything, right? So they have this kind of, like super amorphous blob for their outfit, which is a choice, I suppose. You have like a balaclava on the guy on the left's face, or basically the equivalency of the ski mask with holes. And it just looks like one solid blob because of where they put the head of the other character. So you don't get to see his arms or anything like that. So it looks like he's just kind of like a big boulder. And then on the right side, they, they seriously have somebody that's in a transparent mask. I don't... I don't understand that for many reasons. Guy in the left space for new emote, that is... It's something. I think... I, we, we definitely have the, the happy face. That is a shocked face for sure. I just... I'm just really confused with it. Also, what a weird angle everybody's standing... Like... Everything about this is just weird. Like, why... Why Why is everybody tilted at an angle? And then, like, think about where their feet are relative to the floor. It's just such a weird shot. Wonder how it looked up on the DS looking it up real quick. I I'm sure it's very similar. It's just very odd. Certainly something. Please stop it, he screamed. I could see the robber's faces turn pale. A headfit shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. Then, crying and swinging his arms like crazy, he attacked the two robbers. All by himself. He came to save me. A total stranger. All by himself. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still risked his life for me. Wow. That's a great story. <laughs> um, it was something. Yes, you may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. That's why I fell in love with him like I did. Are, are they really tearing up? I'm not going to pretend to cry, but Phoenix is on the verge of tears. That's so romantic. I'd fall in love too, I guess. Nick. Yeah. Hope you'll do the same for me if I ever get taken hostage. We rescued you from a hostage situation. Shut up, Maya. With Maya, the possibility always seems to loom in the not-so-distant future. And he gulps. I like how we don't answer her question, too, by the way. Go to the CEO's office. <laughs> yup, looks stupid. And certainly something. Did... Oh. <laughs> Did they really put tape of him coming out of the safe? That is something. 
October 13, KV security at CO's office. Well, I guess this is where it all went down, huh? Oh yeah, and to think about it too, if we had left the text box not transparent, it would actually be pretty hard to see some of those details most of the time. The walls in here look thick, just like you'd expect in a CEO's office. What has that got to do with anything? Hey, it's you guys! Oh, it's Detective Gumshoe. Today was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? Sure was, pal. That prosecutor made real fools out of us. Not really. Well, I mean, I guess... I guess he just kind of let you speak and then the rest happened. Yeah, I feel for you. Wow, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like... Oh, that was great. You guys got what you deserve, pal. Ho ho ho. Or something to that effect. Do I really sound like that to you, pal? The gumshoe fits. Um, well, anyway. The point is, I can tell when someone puts their heart into their jobs. And I can sympathize when things don't go your way. Sometimes, I feel like wrong is the only way for things... Is the only way things go for us detectives. Wow, I had no idea Detective Gumshoe was such a nice guy. Now this little love fest is over. Maybe we can start investigating. Wow. Guess we'll examine the room first. I'm gonna examine the red button. Oh, there's a button here. Let's see. She pressed the red button. Hey, cut it out. Don't press that. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Every day Detective Gumshoe could jump like that. What is that button anyway? It's an emergency buzzer. It says right there on the panel, pal. Oh, I added pal by accident. I didn't actually say pal. Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Nick, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It's used to summon security up here. Really? And it's possible on the night of the crime. Oh, so when the CEO was attacked, you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around down there. They said that the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. Mr. Bullard, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, by the way, just so you know. Hmm. I think we better go talk to the guard about this emergency buzzer. The office buzzer connected to the basement security guard office, so no fingerprints on it, added to the court record. These look like some kind of bookshelf slash rolling cabinet hybrid. Uh, can't get it be in between these two shelves. Don't strain yourself trying. Looks like the shelves are controlled by a special panel. So I guess it's one shelf at a time, huh? Looks like they're filled with bunches of files. Yeah, files filled with data about security jobs they were hired to handle. Be a good night's reading if you've got insomnia. I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, like UFOs or something. Um, okay. Look at the laptop. Must be the CEO's desk. It's a lot simpler than I would have thought. Hey, that looks like a super soft chair. Let me try it out just for a second. Oh, nice. I feel just like a CEO. Hey, you, whip me up a cup of some really expensive import tea. Some scones. Move it. Ah, oh, this is the life. Um, the victim sat in that chair just before he was brutally killed, you know. Ah! Painting. Wow, look at that huge frame photo. Mount Mountains rising majestically against a dark, cloudy sky. There's a title written at the bottom of the photo. The greatest sunrise of my life. This is it? This was his best sunrise? Either this guy didn't get out enough, or he really had rotten luck with the weather. Maybe if he had lived a little longer, he'd have seen some better days. The giant safe. Wow, this safe is unbelievable. I bet four pearls would fit in there. It's got a bunch of doohickeys attached to it. Pretty amazing, all right. Motion sensors, heat sensors, weight sensors. Hey, Nick, come on. Let's open it up and take a look. I broke into one of these. Wouldn't that set me down the path to Hoodlumville? Tape on the floor. This rope. 
think it fell out of the safe when it was opened. Wow, she is super dumb. Good old gumshoe indeed. I don't think so. So you mean... Yeah. This string shows where and how the corpse was lying. Y you mean... The victim... He was killed by being crushed by the safe door? She can't be serious, can she? I think she's serious. Look at the binder in the middle of the room. Check out this big thick binder here. Leave the heavy lifting to me, Nick! Reading a file isn't exactly backbreaking work. It's a little hard on the eyes. Ah! Uh, what did you find out, Nick? This file. It's not about any sort of security operations or anything. Sheet's file is all about mask to mask. It's filled with info on them. What? What kind of info? It's filled with incredibly detailed information about his methods and the crime scenes. Huh? Hey Nick, look at the last page. It's a list, let's see. Tier of Eminon, 100,000. This looks like a list of all the treasures that Mass to Mass stole. So then, 100,000 is the value of the stolen item? I don't know. Sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. Gains list added to the court record. Alright, uh, so now we have stuff we could potentially share with him if we need to. Ask what happened. Detective Gumshoe, tell us what you know about the murder. Um, okay. The thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Hey, come on, what about how we put our hearts into our work? These are really working against us right now, and we need help. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. The victim's name is Kane Bowler. He was the CEO of KB Security. Pretty big fellow in his own right. His corpse was discovered at 9 this morning. His estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. The cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. Probably an object in this room. It happened at exactly the same time Master Mass was stealing the urn, huh? All taps you report added to the court record. Time of death, 10-12. At 1 a.m., cause cerebral hemorrhaging from blunt trauma to the head. So why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? There's a good explanation for that one. Waller's body was stashed away inside that safe. Safe? Well, it is pretty big. Nobody had heard from him, and when they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Oh, so the body fell out. The wind string must be the shape from when he fell out. I think we still need some more information about Mr. Biller. Maybe you could start by getting the man's name right. I guess that's a hint to actually present the profile there. <laughs> Let's present it, I guess. Oh wait, I can't do it there. I keep forgetting in this mode you have to present it differently. I'll never remember that across the mini games. Let's present him directly. Detective Gumshoe, tell us more about this Mr. Shane Bluebard. That's Kane Bowler, not Shane Bluebard, pal. Oh, yeah. The victim in this case just doesn't make much of an impression on me. Well, you were the victim up until Mr. Bullard was found dead. Yeah, and his body wasn't discovered until this morning. Anyway, we don't have enough information yet. Can you help us out? Sorry, I'm actually a little confused myself. For some reason, I'm just babbling like an idiot right now. Okay, Nick, now is our chance to get more info about the victim. So hurry up and ask. Oh, I, see, I think that unlocked the victim. But we'll continue going forward with Detective Abby. So, um... What happened to Master Mask? He's at the detention center screaming like a madman. Investigate me again! He keeps yelling. 
Oh, uh, no, no. I don't... I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyway, right? Ugh. Chat, it's gonna take them a long time to realize there's more than one thief. We're strapped in, chat. <laughs> we're, we're in for a long one. Oh, you mean that detective at me? Ho, ho, ho. Oh, that was great. That guy got what he deserved. Ho, 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 ho. Now that's a detective I know and love. Think about it. Ami was always around when a calling card showed up. And he always mysteriously disappeared when the heist took place. I was hiding at the crime scene. <laughs> You're right. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just knew he was the thief. I would explain how he's able to retrieve the stolen item he kept bragging about. Yeah, he just did that to make himself look like a great detective, that's all. But there's this one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist? Yeah, the Tear Aminon case. There was a witness on that one. A witness? Here, I saved the newspaper clipping. The thief is already under arrest. You guys can keep it. Stolen the gem and the thief. Hey, this guard here. I might have seen him somewhere before. Pretty so small, so it's hard to see. Now that she mentions it. Newspaper clipping out of the court record and article in Master Mess for Slice. Take a look at it now. So, did he only do one actual heist? Oh. Nothing more to read. Let's ask about Prosecutor Godot. Ooh, that prosecutor. I really don't like that guy. We used our own evidence to do that to Mr. Delight. Yeah, I think he did that... Did it that way just because he knew it hurt more. That's what my gut tells me, anyway. Who is that Java-addicted mass maniac, anyway? Prosecutor Godot? It's quite the enigma, huh? The thing is, pal, never even heard of the guy before. He showed up one day at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. That's right. But this was his first case as a prosecutor. And it's true. According to the records anyway, but no way he's an amateur. He's an ice man in court. A maverick that gives me goosebumps. An ice man in court? I don't think I've ever heard that phrase used before, to be honest with you. Hold on, chat. Today we're gonna learn. Is it just like another Top Gun reference? Yeah, maybe he's just referring to Top Gun. Is Top Gun used the phrase Maverick all the time? I'm assuming this is just a Top Gun reference. Goosebumps. You? Yeah, I knew something was off about him, so I asked around. Nobody would talk to me. They'll just turn the other way. Poor Detective Gumshoe. I had no idea you were so unpopular. Oh no, that's not what I meant. That Godot guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. feeling he's hiding some kind of dark secret. Go to the victim. Can you tell us some more about Mr. Bowler? He was the CEO of KB Security, right? What kind of company is it anyway? Well, the company basically sends security teams out to the buildings to guard them. Did she hear seriously ask what the security company does? Mr. Bowler must have had the chance to learn a lot of secrets doing this kind of work. Oh, and? And, I don't know how to put this, but the guy was kind of a money grubber. Really? Me too. I just love money. I just can't ever get enough. Please stop leaning in towards me like that. Or getting to my wallet. Anyway, looks like he did some pretty shifty stuff to earn his millions. Oh, so that's my problem. I need to be shiftier. Let me go already. Apparently, he was involved in selling trade secrets between rival companies. Well, that's pretty dirty and underhanded. Yeah, oh, 
Ibi Security used to head security operations against mass to mass. What? Really? Yeah, and after screwing up so many times, the company's reputation really took a nosedive. So it really was Bullard who sent Ron the blackmail letter, huh? Okay. Well, I think that's all we need to do for now. Four is usually kind of the magic number. If we ever get stuck, I'll remember that I didn't ask him more things. But I'm assuming that's all we need to do to go forward. Let's go to the security room. Oh boy. Also, this room is ridiculous. Who is a room like that? Like, on, what are we even looking at? Do they know what a security room looks like? Honestly, chat, what is this? What what are they even possibly measuring with anything in like the, the middle of the screen? Honest question. It almost looks like there's like a RPG going on in the upper left. I don't know what this room is. Is it a floor lights? What is going on? Wow, this is really something else. It sure is. Oh no, Blue Dawn has gone meta. For security guard office, it sure doesn't feel very secure. Maybe security guard. Uh oh, I just remembered. Larry might be. Hey, Nick, what's up? Ugh, so he is here. Yo, how's it hanging, dude? You got my sweet little Maya with you, too. Hi, Larry. Here I was working my fingers to the bone. Nim walks an angel. No problems with the daytime date. It's all good. No, that's not what we're here for. I'm investigating the Bullard murder case. Blue Don is questioning his, <laughs> exactly his, his existence. Huh? Oh, yeah. That's right. You're a lawyer, aren't you? He's so hopelessly clueless. Well, if it's about the murder case, boy, have I got some good info for you. Really? What is it? Hmm. Well, I don't mind sharing with my sweet little Maya. But Nick here is a different story. But Larry, I thought you two were old school buddies. That was then and this is now. Anyway, I'm going to ignore him for now. Let's examine the carton. Hmm. Those screens there show what's going on all over the building. Everywhere. And it's my job to keep a steady eye on them. All of them. I wouldn't sound so smug if I were you. Can you watch these regu- Oh, can you watch regular TV on these two? Anyone would sit here and watch TV instead of working. It is Larry. Hey, Maya, I'm a pro, okay? Besides, you can't get regular TV on it. And how do you know that, Larry? Because that was my first bit of investigation, if you know what I mean. I know what you're thinking. It was a professional investigation, all right? Look at the chair. That's my workstation. Pretty cool, huh? Keep a steady eye on the monitors and use that mic for communicating. Look at all this equipment. It must be hard to operate. No biggie. I think there's an instruction manual somewhere in this room. Somewhere? Instruction manual? What are you going to do in an emergency? Well... Let's start by calmly looking for the instruction manual. During that time, my partner, the old lady, would calmly look for her reading glasses. Oh no. That's what us security professionals call teamwork. Even my and Pearls could run this place better. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? It's the middle panel. Wow, take a look at these things there. Hey, hey Larry, what are they? Hmm. You just say, hmm? Hey, man, it's not like I have to know what they are to do my job. I always thought they were just some kind of decoration or something. Oh, boy. Oh, that's where we have the laugh track right there, chat. Where'd this guy ever get a job here, anyway? Oh, actually, important thing we have to do before we go further. Present the badge. Hey, Larry, there's something I want you to look at. Hey, Nick, I told you. I'm a pro, and you don't interrupt a pro when he's working. I have time to sit and chat with you, all right? Damn, we got rejected. Oh, is that right? 
Oh. <laughs> Actually, I've got time for you, though, Maya. We're gonna have to squeeze this guy if we want to get more information out of him, huh? Look at the... Oh. Hey, Larry. That's your jacket, isn't it? That's right. Um, did you know you hung it right on the top of some kind of lever? Yeah, sure. Told to never ever touch that lever. He scowled and huffed at me. Something terrible will happen if you do. Got it, Greenhorn? So, why hang your jacket on such an important lever? Because it got me curious. Jacket's weight pulls the lever down. That's what they call an accident. Doesn't the suspense just kill you? Don't you want to know what'll happen, huh? It's true. It's killing me too. What about you, Nick? Yeah, but for a different reason. Look at the paper thing. I think it's written on this poster in fine print. Welcome, Wild Fox. Hope you're doing well. Hmm. I wonder if we'll find that instruction manual, actually. Regards five commandments. Wow, this sounds serious. Let's see what it says. Number one, obey thy superior. Number two, respect thy superior. Number three, smile at thy superior. Number four, salute thy superior. Number five, buy donuts for thy superior upon command. It's signed Wendy Oldbag, head supervisor. She's one tough old bird, I'll let me tell you. Cross her and you come face to face with your real genuine ray gun. Oh no, they brought that back? No. <laughs> right, chat? No. It was bad enough she was in the space helmet in the second game. Uh, yeah. Sounds scary, all right. Well, fortunately, she's out on vacation. That's why I'm so relaxed right now. And there's a bag. That's my partner's seat. Your partner? Well, that's what I call her. She's my superior, actually. None of a weird old lady. Um, there's tea spilled all over that machine, you know. Oh, don't worry about it. Just the other day, I spilled some chocolate milk on mine. It still works fine, more or less. They really know how to build them, I guess. Do I think I examined everything I need to examine? The things we needed to look at, in order... We had to look at the space helmet for the achievement. We looked at the pink bag. We looked at the poster. We looked at the jacket. We looked at all of the screens. Yeah, I don't see anything else that hasn't been looked at. So we examined the chair on the right, which we did. I think because we fully examined it, we should get the achievement. And now we're going back to playing it blind. Just making sure nothing else was possibly missed. Okay. Let's continue with our conversations. Let's ask about this good info. What's this good info you were talking about, Larry? Hey, I'm a guard, a pro. Can't just give away information for free. You want a bribe? The professionals were more, I don't know, honest? Can you talk to him, Maya? Larry, tell us already. What's the good info? Hey, I like that. This kitten has got some claws. Okay, you really want to know? Yes, yes, so tell me. Okay, so the thing is, Ronda Light was an employee here. Naturally, since I'm a pro, looked into his background. Follow me? Yes, you're a pro. I follow you. Go on. Well, one year ago, Ronda Light was fired. There was no warning at all. This happened all of a sudden. Well, this is a small company. I think that was pretty awful. I guess he must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Gee, chat, I wonder what he could have done. I wonder if it was around the time of the first heist. Hmm. Like maybe skipping out of work to go pick up some hot chicks or something. No, that's just you. Security guard. So what is it you like? So what is it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Well, you know me. I get by all right, I guess. 
First, I have to keep my eyes on those monitors. All the time. Monitors? Why is she asking monitors like a question like there aren't a million of them in this room? There's security cameras set up in each room around the building. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel like my eyes are gonna fall out. Oh! And if I see something suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? The security teams for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. But I'm no amateur either. So if it's something small, I don't bother calling them. In other words, you basically watch TV on sc TV screens all day long. The night of the crime. You're in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? Well, why do you say that? It's just a part-time job for me. Can't operate the equipment, and I'm dumb. Quite a reason. Even if it is part-time, and you're dumb, you're still in charge of security here. Give me a break. I'm trying to pin the whole thing on me. It's not fair, Nick. Huh? I don't think you can expect someone like him to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is you were here that night, right? Are you seriously gonna try to lie about this? Why? Well, we have two locks. Oh no, I knew something smelled bad. It was the butts after all. Well, it's like I always say. That was then and this is now, okay? Looks like I'm gonna have to break his psych blocks after all. Hmm. Well, do we have enough information to ask him anything? We did learn about the buzzer. We have the list, but that won't really help us with this. Let's take a look at the list we picked up earlier. So Tira Eminon is a jewel, 100,000. Crown of Bongora is 150,000. Left Hand of Hades, Sculpture, 240,000. Portrait of Magina, 500,000. Hmm. Just a little bit shy. A million. I mean, I guess I could just ask him, and the worst thing that happens we come back later. Let's present it. Take that! The Night of the Crime. The Night of the Crime. Are you working hard like you were supposed to? What? Huh? Uh, of course I was. Why wouldn't I have been? But didn't you just sneak out of office just yesterday to go see Miss Delight? Huh. That was that, and this is this. Is there any chance that you snuck out of work last night, too? Never, I didn't sneak out. I'll tell you what, even bet you a dollar. Dollar, wow. Now that's confidence. Boy, I felt the sarcasm on that one. What's with that drenched in the rain puppy look on your face? Do you have evidence that I left my position, or are you just pulling my chain? The evidence that Larry was not manning his station when the murder had happened is. Do we have anything? Oh. I mean, I guess I could just present the keycard, right? So if he had been watching the monitors, he would have seen the guy get killed? I- maybe we could just go with this? Take that! Take that. This is the keycard to the C CEO's office, right? Yeah, that's right. This keycard was found inside a wallet. This wallet. You know about this, right? I've never seen it before. Liar. I delivered this wallet to Miss Delight just yesterday. Give me a break. You can't expect me to remember every little thing that happens. Well, I do expect you to remember something that happened just yesterday. What time was it when you found this wallet? I guess it was around 1 in the morning on the first floor of our company building. One o'clock in the morning? That's right. In other words, Larry, at the time of the murder, you were away from the security guard office. Ah! Yeah, but, but there's something you didn't think about. What's that? The 
The ship that day didn't start until 10 p.m. Murder might have snuck in before then. What do you mean by that? Murder had snuck in before 10 p.m. And it wasn't my fault. The fault of the guy whose ship was before mine. I have the feeling that he still doesn't get the seriousness of this. Listen up, Larry. I you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the killer snuck into the CEO's office after 10 p.m. during your shift. Do I just present the keycard again because we know it was used? I think I just present it again, which is kind of dumb. But sure, we'll just present it again. So we know from the previous trial what time it was used. Well, they'll probably bring it up here. Take that! Larry, when you use this keycard, does it leave a record? Yeah, it does. I can't show the record to just anyone, you know. Keycard data was already made public in the trial today. What? I didn't know that. Any kind of request for info like that is supposed to go through me. Boy, does that sound a bit arrogant coming from a part-time guard. Anyway, according to the data, the door to the CEO's office was open with this card. Furthermore, it was definitely used at 1am, the time of the murder. No way! Yes, yeah, someone used this to get into the CEO's office. That happened at 1am on the night of, your, of the crime. Right in the middle of your shift. Oh. Larry, you can't duck your responsibility this time. Ah! No! Like how the evidence was just waving the card in his face repeatedly. Let's ask him about the night of the crime, I guess. Oh, I knew it! It's all my fault! It's my fault that the boss was killed! My fault! Larry... There's nothing I could do. The poor nation's to deal with too, man. What happened that night anyway? Uh... My Donna happened. Huh? Your... Donna? I had a bad feeling about this. Yeah, my Donna called and said to talk to you right away. I went to see her and he was standing right there next to her. Um, who was? Her new boyfriend. It's like some horrible joke. Before I knew what was going on, the guy sobbed me right in the kisser. Socked him in the kisser? We are just throwing out the most random of TV references. Isn't that the Honeymovers? Or Honeymooners or whatever? So we've had, like... I'm pretty- we had things like the Harlem Shake. We've had references to Top Gun. I think Money Python, question mark. Normally I'm the one that does the punching, isn't that right, Maya? Yeah. So is that why you left the security guard office? Well, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. How could I ever make up for it, Nick? What can I do? What? What? <laughs> He's curled up on the floor, crying like a baby. Oh, boy. Nick? Is there anything I could do? Anything, just name it. I'll do whatever I have to make up for it. I swear I will. Larry. Hey, Nick. Ozzy's offering. Why don't you show him the evidence we've got? He's right. Maybe we'll get at least one bit of useful information from him. Nick. Right, so I'm assuming they want me to show the buzzer. Let's present this. Um... Buzzer in the CEO's office is directly connected to this room, right? That's right, just like my heart is connected to yours, Maya. Oof. Big oof on that one. Huh? Go ahead, Maya. Press the buzzer in your heart. I promise I'll come run into, your re run into your rescue like the professional guard I am. Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. I try. I think you could tell us about the buzzer now. Yes, please. Please tell us. Okay. I guess so. Prepare to be wowed. Ask about the emergency buzzer. Um, I accidentally pressed the buzzer earlier. Yeah, I heard it. That was you, huh? 
the security guard, aren't you? Why don't you come to the CEO's office? Well, this is the third floor of the basement. CEO's, CEO's office is on the first floor. Thought it would be a good idea to, uh, adopt a wait-and-see approach. Or, like, prepare to be disavowed, says Kirk. Welcome, Kirk. Plus, there's a police detective here, right? Just didn't think it was necessary. It's as if he's trying to win an award for the laziest person on the planet. Um, let's get back to talking about the night of the murder. I was thought she was going to say, let's get back to business. I'm not going to lie. Is it true the buzzer didn't go off that night? It must be a record, right? You must have had a look at it, right? Of course I did. I couldn't possibly have made a mistake either. You think you could take one more look for us? Pretty please? Oh, okay. I just can't say no to you, Maya. What do you think, Nick? He's probably right. Even a guy like Larry couldn't make a mistake like that. Whoa! What is it? What's wrong? I made a mistake! Huh? But but how? It can't be. It's impossible. Okay, enough already. What about the records? That night, it went off just once. In the morning. And around 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? That's when the murder happened. Really? Are you serious? That's terrible. It can't be. The buzzer went off once at 1.02 a.m. on October 12th at the CEO's office. Can we can we get him arrested for criminal negligence? <laughs> right, chat? <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. He's done nothing as a security officer here. Buzzer record added to the court record. I guess we're good to go. Do we have any hours we could go? Go back to the office. Hmm. I guess we could see if anybody's here in the main exhibition hall. Treasure's Ukraine exhibit is all ruined now. Maya, I'm sorry. It's just so sad. This was our big chance for everyone to learn about the spirit channeling. They could cheer her up somehow. Well, now that we got the sacred urn back, maybe they can reopen it. Really? Sure. Maybe we could label it the urn of mass to mass desires. It'd probably attract a lot of attention. Whoa! Whoa, whoa! It's brilliant, Nick. We could clean up and be filthy rich. Woohoo! Wow, that was surprisingly easy. Let's go to the basement, see if there's anybody to talk to. Upper 13th, Lordly Taylor Basement Warehouse. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wright. Miss Andrews. She's still hanging around down here for. Um, so, how's it going? What about the secret urn? Oh no, not the ghost. Urn. Oh, that. It's been taken care of already. What do you mean, oh, that? Taken care of? Do you mean it's been found? He's acting very guilty. Did she end up breaking it or something? I was wondering if it was broken at the time of the crime. But oh well. Yes. It was brought in during the trial today. Wow, really? You really are the greatest, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright had nothing to do with it. It was Master Mass's wife that found it. Well, anyway, I'm... I'm so relieved. Yeah, that's a bit suspicious. The Mass identity. I just heard all about it on the news. Oh, chat didn't hear it? It definitely went off. In one second. Audio is any different. Oh, my bad. I'll play it manually. I gotta open it up though. Give me one second. 
Oh, not, not the whole Mateo thing. Oh my gosh, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> Can you imagine if I let that play? That thing would never end, chat. Holy, it was like two minutes of dialogue. That, that would have been nightmare tier if I let that play. Uh, wasn't expecting to open it, so I don't have it immediately open. This should be it. I think as long as I do this, chat should hear it. I'm a ghost. Assuming chat just heard that. Just heard all about it on the news. Apparently she heard about I'm a ghost on the news. So that detective was actually the thief all along. Looks that way right now. Is it ghost not playing or is it others? As I said before, I heard it earlier. That's why I looked up. It's my fault. I'm the one who ended up hiring Damas to guard the treasures. Don't blame yourself. You were just doing your job. Hey, Nick. She wants to apologize. You should let her. So, when was it that you hired Detective at me again? About 20 days ago. And when was it that Mass to Mass calling card arrived? That was about 10 days ago. So he sent a calling card to the very place he was hired to guard. I guess that's it then. Detective Atme must have really wanted the sacred urn after all. I guess so. Hey, okay, night of the crime. What? The master mass murdered someone as well. Well, that's how things look right now. Yes, but I thought he was here stealing the urn at the time. Well, we're talking about a criminal mastermind. Anything is possible. Nick, let's get down to business already. There it is. They were teasing that for a while. They're gonna defeat the Huns, Chad. On the night of the theft, did you notice anything suspicious about Detective Atme? No, I couldn't have. After all, he was hidden the entire time. Never even caught a glimpse of him. He claims that's the way he always operates. It's just what he says so he can have an alibi when he commits the thefts himself. Yeah, he's caught in the crime scene photo dressed up as Mass to Mass pretty well. Sacred urn. I'm so glad that you got your sacred urn back. Yes, there's still something that bothers me about it. W well, what is it? Not exactly sure. Somehow the urn that came back seems different. Really? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Miss Andrews? No, I don't know anything. Well, why would I? There we go. I don't even know why they bother with the locks. Psych locks. I mean, it kind of told us everything we needed there, to be honest. What do you think this means, Nick? Oh, no. It means the person that holds the secret to the mystery of the sacred urn is our very own Miss Andrews. Hmm. Wait. I don't think I have anything that she would be doing, though. Maybe now we have to go back to the detention center? Like, all these are related to the other person. Oops. Yeah, there's the I am. I think anything has changed down here. I'm just gonna go back to the detention center. October 13, detention center, visitor's room. Oh, Mr. Wright! Mr. Delight, did they finish their interrogation? Yes, but please don't leave me alone anymore. Mr. Delight, you lied to us before, didn't you? Well, uh, you see. The same night the sacred urn was stolen from the Lordly Taylor department store. The blackmail letter you got summoned you to KB security to hand over some money. And then, that's where the CEO, Kane Bullard, was murdered. But, there's only one Ron Delight, am I right? The only question is, where were you that night? This time I want to hear the whole truth. Life depends on it. Okay. Let's talk. Mask to mask.
Mr. Delight, you still insist that you're Master Mask. Isn't that what I've been saying since yesterday? That was a quick response. Tell me about it. Be honest, it's getting- it's starting to get irritating. Oh, I love it when even Phoenix has had enough chat. But listen, Mr. Delight. The trial today, we learned the true identity of the thief, didn't we? Oh, we had his breakdown here again for some reason. His crazy eyes. He's forced the great one himself. Here I am, the tragic clown. I guess it's true. I wasn't the one who stole that urn. Of course not. After all, there could be security at the time. I'm the person dressed up as Master Mask in this photo. It's gotta be Detective at me. I did the crime. That night, you didn't go to Lordly Taylor. What did KB Security, right? Yes. Went to KB Security at the time of the blackmail... Or, excuse me. Went to KB Security at the time THE blackmail note said I should. Alright. What happened next? Well, I used to work there, so I knew where the CEO's office was. I knocked, but there was no answer. Then I used the keycard to unlock the door. It's probably when he dropped his wallet. I went into the CEO's office. Someone was in there. Someone. like the outline of Detective at me there. And suddenly they bashed me over the head. Bam! The gang baller that hit you? I don't know. The person ran away while I was still stunned. When I came to my senses, the sight I saw left me speechless. The dead body of the CEO was right there in front of me. I thought I'd die myself. Anyway, I thought I should do something with the body. So that's why you put it in the safe? Yes, that's right. I used to be the chief of one of the security teams, so I knew how to open it. Okay, what did you do after that? Well, I got out of there for starters. I was the one who set up the security cameras in that building. So I knew how to avoid being spotted by them. Nick, all of a sudden, Mr. Light sounds kind of like the murderer to me. Please don't say that. Why you were fired. Mr. Delight, is it true that one year ago, you were forced to quit KB security? Oh, how did you... I'm begging you, please don't tell Desi, please! Don't worry, you haven't told anyone yet. You, thank goodness. Er, no, um, I mean... I suppose I'll have to tell her sometime. She'll find out eventually. Why have you been hiding it from her anyway? Jessie would despise me if you, she ever found out I was living a life of crime. Now, I find it hard to believe the safe code wasn't changed after a supervisor was fired. You would think. Then again, they hired, uh... <laughs> butts himself to, as a security guard, so they must have very low standards of security for a security team. Criminal, a thief. She'd never forgive me. My marriage would be over. Knowing that, why did you become a thief in the first place? Because Desi spends money like it's water. There's no job in the world that could bring in enough money. Except being a thief. At least that's what I thought anyway. To work in a max security prison? Oh no. So you became master mask for Desiree, huh? Okay, so we have one piece of evidence. I think we could show him the clipping. Hey, this is an article about my debut heist. Boy, that was a tough one. Before I knew it, they were hot on my trail. Exactly. It doesn't count if I say it, though. But mask to mask. Must come no way, right? Because in the article, he disappeared. That's right. I got sudden bursts of inspiration. Oh, did he throw his costume out in the trash? 
Oh, okay. Okay, I think I'm figuring it out. Okay. So, we weren't sure when Detective At Me became the person. So, I think what happened is... If he threw his costume away... The other person would get access to the costume. Although... Did he make a second one? Because didn't he do stuff after this? We'll see, I guess. I hid my mask to mask costume in a nearby plastic bucket. Close enough. Then I quickly changed into my security guard uniform. Pretty clever, eh? Wow, awesome! Hey, hold the phone! The guard in this photo. Is this you, Mr. Delight? <laughs> That's right. Nice trick if I do say so myself. Nice and easy to figure out. Even Pearls could see through that in a heartbeat. At first sight, garden photos run to light. And as you might expect, Detective At Me found the disguise. He truly deserves the title of Ace Detective. Detective At Me found the Master Mask disguise? Hmm, that's interesting. Yes, and I heard he brought it home with him. So that's it. That's when At Me got his hands on this. Thanks to that, I got the chance to remake my costume. Okay, so we did make a second one. That must have been really time-consuming, huh? Yes, it took quite a while to complete. Anyway, a few days after that... Received the first of the blackmail letters. Blackmail letters? You got them starting when? Tell me more, now! Hey, calm down. Don't get so worked up. Let's ask about the blackmail letter. This blackmail letter. Is this the first one you got? No, of course not. But this is the first one that ever called me out to a specific location. Hmm. So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes. Just a few days after the Tira Aminon heist. So, I'm wondering somewhat if this scenario has happened. The I can't be in two places at once dilemma, or like the double jeopardy. I'm wondering if the solution is more that because he set up the security cameras, the time codes are wrong. Like he could have purposely set them off by about an hour for his alibi. I don't think it would be that hard to manipulate if he had access to the whole system. We'll see if they do anything with that though, I suppose. Yes. Just a few days after the tears of Eminon heist. That first letter said, I know you did it. So someone found out about your true identity? Just like that? Ah, oh, it's not easy being a master thief, you know. Got proof that it was you, so give up, he went on to say. Though in the end, I had to give up the treasure I went through, all that trouble to steal. Is that right? Hey, hang on a second. You mean you had to give it up? Oh, don't worry. I put the jewel in the safe deposit box the letter specified. Someone sent me 10,000. No one said anything about being worried, you know. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. Plans? Nice plans. Oh, they reset it. So yeah, there is like a limitation of four. I was wondering if it was like a DS limitation. Because I remember it not allowing for too much room there. these plans you're talking about? They were instructions on how to steal the crown, or painting, or some rare treasure. You showed security blind spots, escape routes, even suggested training methods. Do you mean the one who planned the heist wasn't you? No, it wasn't. Only planned the very first one. After that, plans from some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. Hmm. It sounds like Mr. Delight is thankful to the person that was blackmailing him. So, Ron Delight was masked to mask after all. But, someone else is behind the thefts. Someone who planned them all out in detail.
All I had to do was deposit the treasures I stole into that safe deposit box. And I just waited for the cash to come in the mail. Try not to look so evil about it. So, you went after the sacred urn because of one of those plans too? Yeah, I imagine... I imagine it's still probably Detective Luke at me sending the plans. Because that's why he would make the person show up, because he would be the cause of the thief showing up. Well, see, truth is I've never seen the urn. All I did was follow the instructions and steal what I was told to steal. Mr. Delight, everything you told me true. Yes, but please don't tell Desi, okay? From Namas, second high onward, he was stealing as directed by blackmail letters. Ron's testimony added to the court record. Ron, before we go, one more thing I want to ask you. Yes? Please don't hurt me. Mr. Kane Bollard, do you swear it wasn't you who killed him? Yes, of course. I could never. I'm not lying. All I did was hide his body in the safe. Just... Kind of a crime, I'm pretty sure, still, but whatever. Hmm. But then I was afraid they'd discover what I did. So I turned myself in yesterday. Um, why? Well, if the judge had ruled that I was guilty of robbery, then I'd have an alibi, right? Hmm, I guess so. You're really clever, Mr. Delight. I guess I have no choice but to take Mr. Delight at his word. Mystic Maya! Hey. Early! Oh, no, why are you here? How how does she even get here? Two, two questions, chat. One, why did she know we were here? Two, wasn't... Why did... We left her to go on her own, right? Question mark, which is already pretty bad. I'm back! Hey, Pearls. What have you been up to this whole time? Sacred urn, Mr. Nick. Look it back to Crane Village to have it examined. Yeah, oh dear, indeed. And, and, what did you find out? Well, there's no need to worry. They said it's the real urn. Phew. That's a relief. I'm really worried. But, there's one small problem. Problem? Um, these cute little pink splotches. They said that it's paint. They were put on the urn recently. Why aren't we talking about pink splotches again? What's the big deal? Wait, does Phoenix not remember the... Does Phoenix not remember the pink paint all over the floor in the warehouse? What an idiot. Magic tile powers or something? Maybe. What's the big deal? We gotta find out... We gotta find out how they got there. That's the big deal. Yeah, Mr. Nick, we gotta find out how they got there. Okay, okay. We'll go figure out how they got there. Please don't forget about me. I guess I go here. Is the censored blood on the floor? That's what I was saying before, too. Like, I know, for example, uh. Uh. Dengen Rampa used that constantly as an example of another kind of mystery series. You never know with these games. I guess I gotta re examine the paint now to get another clue. Oh. More dialogue here. Oh, Pearl. Nice to see you. H hello there. I haven't seen you around lately. What have you been up to? Well, actually, I was having this urn examined. Oh, I see. Time to be forgotten, maybe. Maybe if we take another good look at this urn. Figure out the mystery of what actually happened here. Well, it's easy. They dropped the urn. We know they dropped it in the corner when something was being dragged, and that's how the paint got on it. I don't think this is a real mystery, but whatever. Nick, let's look around one more time. So I'll examine the box that we already examined last time. This box, there's something about it that's bothering me. That's the box the sacred urn was in. It looks like there's some pink paint on it, too. 
It's definitely the same color as the stuff on the urn. I think I know how the paint got on it now. Alright, let's investigate again, Nick. Urn box has Fink Sains on it at its court record. Looks to me like it's been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this paint mark. The bottom left part of it's shaped oddly and it's shockingly pink. Mr. Nick, could it be that this odd shape is... Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is it. Ah! Oh. That's the box the sacred urn was in. You look here. A little bit of paint on the box as well. Wow, you're right! Wow, look, it matches! Dot dot. What is it, Mr. Nick? This is all turning out exactly as I thought it would. Mark said it's a court record. Okay, now we could probably talk to her. I think it's all starting to become clear. We're that much closer to solving the mystery of what happened to the urn. Alright, chat. I'm gonna take like a two minute break to refill my water. But if you want in the meantime, test some sounds. Let me know if you hear anything coming through. Okay, chat, that did not take as long as I thought. I guess I'm ready to go. Let's present the Magathama. Take that! The Sacred Urn. Miss Andrews, do you know anything about the Sacred Urn? Do I know anything? I'm in charge of the entire treasure ex exhibit. The urn that was submitted before the court today. It's obviously not the same urn as before. Well, that's... That's, um... True. Maybe it isn't the same. It could be. It could be a fake. Fake? You're the one who said it wasn't the same. That's the most obvious explanation. Do you have any evidence the urn was submitted at the time of the trial was genuine? I guess now I can present the sacred urn. Take that. Take that! Sorry to break it to you. The urn is the genuine article. The girls went back to Green Village and had it examined. Is that right? That's nice, but I don't see how... What she discovered was the urn had been broken. Again. Did you say, again? Yes. Broken once a year ago. That looks like the same thing has happened. Quite recently, too. Recently? You're saying this urn was broken recently? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why do you think it was broken recently? How do you know? Um... I think this is the one? Yeah, this is where it says I am. Just present it. Take that! This poster. Made recently, right? Poster? Ah, oh, the poster for the exhibit. 
At the time when this photo was taken, the urn said, I am on it. But now, for some mysterious reason, it says Ami. The urn was fixed. The letters were transposed. Ah! I am. What does that even mean? I don't know anything about that. I wasn't even there when the photo for this poster was taken. That was a mistake. Now, tell the truth. Uh, well, wait. Or, even if the urn was broken, I had nothing to do with it. Huh? Yes, that's it. Must have been one of the people at the photo shoot. They probably dropped it. I'm sure that's what happened. Hmm. Looks like she's not going to give up that last Cyclops so easily. Do you have any proof the urn was broken here at Lordly Taylor? Um... Does it matter which one? I guess... I feel like I have to present both of these, which is a bit weird. I guess I'll start with... Eight marks, maybe? Well, Miss Andrews? Um... What is this supposed to mean? There's a pink paint all over the urn. Uh... And there is pink paint all over the floor in the walls of the basement warehouse. In other words, the sermon was broken here. Can't weasel out of this one, Miss Andrews. But, but... Uh-oh. He's trying to make her escape. But you could get pink paint anywhere. Well, there's none in my office, that's for sure. Well, there is in my room. Liar. Anyway, the paint on the urn and the paint on the floor. There's no proof it's the same paint. Come on, this is getting ridiculous, thinks Phoenix. Proof linking the paint on the urn to the paint on the floor is... Well, this time I can present the box. Take that! This box. The urn was stored in this, right? Yes, that's right. Well, there's pink paint on this box as well. Ah! Uh, I think you already know where I'm going with this, don't you? Yes, more or less. The paint on the floor has an odd shape imprinted on it, doesn't it? Yes... If you put this box into the impression in the paint, you could see it fits perfectly. Which means this box was dropped right over there. And that is when the urn was broken. Your name does you justice, Mr. Wright. Alright, we haven't dropped a unlock so far. Not that we wouldn't be able to recover, I think. Sacred urn. I'm so sorry. I was the one. The one who broke the urn. Boy, does this make me feel like some sort of evil school teacher. Okay. I'm a terrible person. Not only did I break it, but I tried to hide what I did. Well, that's not so hard to understand, is it, Pearly? No, not at all. I know just how she feels. It happened about two weeks ago. Just after the poster photo was taken, on the same day the urn arrived here. I thought I'd put it away down here for safekeeping. I was carrying it in the box. One second chat. There we go. When I tripped on a paint can and I lost my balance, the box I was carrying crashed to the ground. I heard a terrible noise and thought my heart was going to stop. Hearing the worst, I opened the lid of the box, and that's when it happened. The broken pieces of the urn fell out of the box, landed right in the paint. I... I... I was in shock. Let out a huge scream. Hmm. I can totally see how that could have happened. Yes, clumsy as she is, I'm sure Maya understands. Well, I knew it was the most important treasure in all of Karain Village, though I tried as hard as I could to fix it. Fortunately, the shards were pretty big. That's when the I Am got changed to Ami? I didn't know how it was originally written. But any sane person fixing it would have assumed it said Ami. Damn. Any sane person? Really? Oh, pearls. Said she wasn't very good at spelling. Anyway, I put the urn into the storeroom and no one had seen it since then. Sacred urn, urn updated in the court record. Broken and repaired by Adrian two weeks ago, then replaced in its box. Kept out of sight. 
but something I don't get. I first came here, I didn't see any paint stains. Yeah, there was something in the way last time. It was the statue. Well, that speaks as it was so ugly and embarrassing. Oof. I used the golden statue to cover it. Yeah, the Ami Face statue. Aha! Ask about the statue. The first time that we came down here, not on the night that the sacred urn was stolen. But Mr. Nick. There were no paint marks on the walls or the floor of the warehouse when we were here. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime, around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. And? I realized the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why... I put it where you first saw it. I see. Now it makes perfect sense. Um, but there's still one thing I find strange. What is it, Pearl? The day after the urn was stolen, we came here again. And at that time, the statue had been moved, and the paint was clearly visible. She's right about that. Well, Miss Andrews? Huh? What? I, uh, I don't know anything about that. I placed it there to cover the paint, so why would I move it again? Welcome, Charlie. Thank you for certain mayhem you need to add an ice floor physics. I'm not trying to do that, but welcome, Charlie. Well then, who was it? Who would have done it and why? The day before the theft, Sachi was definitely closer to the door. And the next day, it was moved. But why? Carried into the basement warehouse the day of the crime, moved again that night. Emmy Faye's golden statue updated in the court record. Looks like there's some connection between the sacred urn and the murder case. Well, why? Why do you think so, Nick? Bond of Chris's certain stream that he's doing right now and you'll understand more. Oh, is he suffering slipping off of platforms or something? Because that night, the real thief, Rhonda Light, was at KB Security. So then why did another Master Mask show up here? Called an alibi, Phoenix. A lot of different things are pointing to one undeniable fact. One undeniable fact? The murder trial is starting tomorrow, but... Looks like that thief is going to be making another appearance. To be continued. Okay, we completed the investigation. Let's save our progress. Here we go, chat. Progress. Just in case I miss... Oh, I can't really resave it now. I should have saved earlier. Oh well. We'll take the loss if I didn't get all the things we had to investigate for the achievement. October 14th, 9.41am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. Hey, Nick! What is it this time? You won't believe how many people are here for the trial. Well, it is a murder case. What are you talking about? You're for the trial next door. Next door? Why don't you know this, Nick? Ugh. We're having Detective Atme's trial today. Detective Atme? They say they're going to try him as Mask to Mask. Already? That was fast. Boy, I'd love to see Mask to Mask's trial. I know. By the way, where's Pearls? Who said I know ominously there? Oh, she went back home. She said she can't neglect her training anymore. I know you don't like me. Oh, maybe it's Gumshoe talking. I know you don't like me. Pearls has really gotten into her training lately, huh? Yeah, ever since that incident last year. Oh. Oh, I guess that that also makes sense. I had a 50-50 in my defense. 
please don't ignore me. Oh, Mr. Delight. Good morning. No one likes me. I'm gonna have to agree with him. I really don't like this character. No one would notice me. Even if I was... Even if I killed someone. Come on, don't be silly. Wait a sec. You don't mean... You're the murderer? No, Phoenix. No. No, I'm just a poor thief. No, wait, that's not right. A thief can't really be poor. Now, let's see. According to Mr. Delight, from his second crime on, he was following yeah. a bunch of set plans. Hmm. That time I didn't hear it. Did chat here, though? Lance said someone had been sending to help him commit the heists. Oh, okay, it's working again for the chat. Interesting. Could be the music drowns it out. As I said before, sometimes the game volume gets a bit loud for me. Unfortunately, I have never figured out how to balance that between stream audio and what I actually hear. I said someone has been sending to help him to the fix ice, blah blah blah. Do you really think there's a connection between the thief and the murder, Nick? It's possible. Today's trial's a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid. It's not an option. October 14, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number six. I, I think the chat just didn't hear it the, the other one. See, I heard the other one because the music wasn't loud. That music's very loud to me, so I didn't hear it. So for me, it makes sense. It's consistent. If there's, like, if you played it now, I would definitely hear it, because there's no sound. Bang. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. You're ready. Preparation is the I'm last... Ghost. Like, that time I heard the I'm a ghost. That one's also a bit louder than some of the other ones. You're ready. Preparation is the last refuge of the week. Okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with your opening statement, Mr. Godot. Ugh. Got the judge in the palm of his hand. Yet again. Ron Delight is simply too young to be sent to war. That's all. What? I would dot 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 that too, Judge. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Godot. Ugh. And you need to get out more, Your Honor. Life is war. But that is exactly why you must be more precise in your wording. <laughs> I would just like to hear the judge bang his gavel and go, Contempt of court! Oh, there's the coffee. Uh, indeed, Blue Donna. That's my... That's all my statement means. You understand now, right? Yes. Well then, let's briefly summarize the details of this case. Wow. Judge is taking charge like he knows what's going on for a change. The victim is Kane Bullard, CEO of KB Security. His body was found in a safe at approximately 9 a.m. on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death was estimated as 1 a.m. of the previous day. And that's when our lost little kitten dropped the ball. That little lost kitten is... Of course, the defendant. Bang. Very well then, Mr. Godot. Please call your first witness. I read the quote before I said it. I want you to listen to what he's saying here. I never drink more than 17 cups of coffee during any given trial. Is it because you would die? I'm pretty sure it's because you would... In fact, I'm surprised you could drink that many in a trial. I mean, I guess trials go on for a few hours. That's a lot of caffeine, chat. That can't be good for you. Let alone the amount of liquid. But the first one is always the best. Um, Mr. Godot, your witness. That is so much coffee, indeed. Okay, then. Let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight, has to say for himself. The defendant? Well, Mr. Wright, does the defense have any objections? 
It may be a bit of a disadvantage having the defendant testify, but... I remember when Mia was defending me. She allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. How is he not constantly excusing himself to go to the restroom? Yeah, you would think. She put a lot of trust in me back then. You're gonna put trust in Ron DeLay? What are you, stupid? <laughs> Whatever. We have no objections, Your Honor. The defense will allow Mr. Delight to testify. Ugh. You've got guts, trite. Bang. All right then, Mr. Ron Delight. Please take the stand. You did it, didn't you? Yes. What? Uh, no, 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 no. Th that's not true. Hmm. For a moment there, I thought we'd set the record for the shortest trial ever. <laughs> that would have been pretty bad. Uh, well, Mr. Delight already looks pr plenty guilty with that face he's making. Once he opens his big mouth, he'll probably put the last nail in his own coffin. It's almost like making him testify is dumb in this trial. Huh. Very well. Now, can you tell me something? You didn't kill Bowler. Why did you go to KB security? Well, I... That's kind of hard to say. Boy, I wish I could go home. Bang. Now then, let's hear some testimony about what happened. Hey, Chad, I'm gonna have to focus. Witness testimony. My visit to KB security. Let's look for where we need to press and where we need to present evidence. That evening, around 1 a.m., I see Mr. Bullard in his office at KB Security. Okay. The blackmail letter I got he ordered me to go there. Okay, we definitely need to press this. I've been working for KB Security until a year ago. They knew where his office was. Uh, there's no point to pressing that. Oh, that's it? There's three, three statements? 1 a.m., the exact time the murder took place. The weak get washed away by the tides of fate. The strong drink it up. Ugh. It's bitter today, too. Just like my destiny. <laughs> he is going full pro-tag mode. <laughs> Alright, chat? He's monologuing like he's definitely the main character of the game. You never know that from the way he's chugging it down. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination if you please. All right, so let's press the second statement. Hold it. Hold it! It ordered you there? It was the first time I'd gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does that mean you've gotten other blackmail letters then? Oh, of course. You just say things like, steal this, or take that, hold it! Aha! Uh -huh. Why don't you save those for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say any more. Now then, what should I do? Press harder. And what did the black matter, blackmail letter in question say? Wait, are, wait, hold on. Are, are, are we gonna get him off the hook for the robberies he did earlier with double jeopardy? Wait a minute. I feel like that's kind of collusion. If he gets, a, if he gets away without getting accused of these other crimes, they're gonna be like, seriously? This is where you- this is where you declare some mistrials, chat. I guess we'll see what happens, I suppose. It said to bring him 50,000. Money, eh? Perfect motive for committing murder. Oh, but- wait, wait! I never intended to pay that money anyway. Oh? Is that right? After all, I had nothing to hand- I had nothing to hold over my head. Nothing to be afraid of. Uh, well, that's not true. Hmm. An important point indeed. Bang. Witness, let's have that added to your testimony. Ah. Huh. Muddy mudskipper in an out outer space has a better chance of surviving than I do. Muddy mudskipper in outer space. What? 
Is this a reference to something? What does this mean? What am I? <laughs> what? I, I I'm gonna go okay. I'm assuming this is some kind of 90s reference I don't get. I'm be real with you, chat. Listen, I didn't grow up with cable, so if this is like a reference to something like Disney or Nickelodeon, I am not gonna get the reference. I'm assuming he's referencing something that's like a cartoon or something. Because that's like way too specific for it to be a coincidence. Okay, let's see if I could just present evidence here. So the reason he would be concerned is that his wife doesn't know. Let's see if we can present it here. Uh-oh, I don't like that it didn't change the music. Okay, so I took a penalty. Did I present on the right statement? That's weird. I feel like that should have worked. Hmm. Freaking... Okay, maybe I have to press this statement? Oh, is it because I didn't press the statement first? I didn't set up the fact that his wife would be concerned? Oh, that's so annoying. This is what I'm talking about, chat. Like, this is how I get points off when I play Phoenix Wright. It's not that I don't understand what the case is doing. It's that I don't understand the steps I need in order to get him to come to the same conclusion. So I think if I press this, then I will be able to go into the reason why he was fired. And then, because of the fact he never told his wife for one year, which is what happened earlier prior to this point, then I can present it to the other one, so... Roll your eyes. I, I got points off for, for presenting the right evidence at the right statement, but at the wrong time. Throw your hands in the air. Classic Phoenix Wright moment. Alright, well, let's press him on this. So, presumably, I can ask when he was fired in this. Phoenix says, used to be a security chief for KV Security, right? Yes. That's right. A security chief? You? And yet, a year ago, you were fired without notice. Revenge for an old grudge. Perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? Apparently, Muddy Mudskipper is from Ren and Stimpy. That makes sense. I've never seen the show. As I said before, that felt way too specific to not be a reference to something. Mm, this isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject. Yeah, let's ask why he was fired. Well, I kind of went both, but I'll probably start with why he was fired. Mr. Delight, please tell us why you were fired from your job. Well, the world is filled with those who have said, I wish I'd never asked that. Okay, then I take it back. Bang. Defendant, please answer the question. I, well... I needed money. You needed money? Oh, well, you see. Essie loves to spend it. It's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? My salary wasn't nearly enough. So I stole data from the company. Come again? Navy security has a lot of sorts of security info on all sorts of companies. And since I was the security team chief, you stole some data. And sold it. Mr. Bullard found out, and I was fired immediately. What? Wish I'd never asked that. How am I able to keep a secret? Made it seem like I'd quit on my own. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to their company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. He sure told you. So you admit you stole data from your company, is that correct? Yes, I'm sorry. Bang. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Oh man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worse. Crashed and then blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this case from the clutches of disaster. Um. Maybe I press him on this one? Hold it. Because he said Jesse doesn't know. Why would you do something like that? Well, for Jesse's hobby, what else? Wasting money, huh? It's not a waste! So, Miss Delight doesn't know that her husband was fired, does she? So it would seem. Not sure what to think about couples who keep secrets like that from one another. Can't believe it. 
Case has gotten even Maya to seriously... or to think seriously about couples. Please try to stay focused, Mr. Wright. Hmm. There wasn't much to his testimony, was there? Sounds like he's avoiding something. At least that's what it sounds like to me. Uh-oh. Got a bad feeling about this. We better be careful. If we don't find a way to make him spill the beans, we'll never get closer to the truth. Am I just gonna present the same statement again? Oh, that's not what I meant. Objection. Oh, I got objected this time. Yes, I'm afraid that reason isn't gonna hold up anymore. What do you mean? The victim had no proof the defendant was masked to mask. But you were the one who stole the company's secrets only one year earlier. Ah, so now this dialogue changed a little bit at that junction. So we're just acknowledging the fact that we pressed him on the one year ago statement. So we are getting new details here. Oh, but that was all over with once I was fired. But it is true that the fact I stole secrets was kept under wraps. Even so, there was no reason for me to pay up now a whole year later. Hmm. Is that really true? What is it, Nick? The fact that Ron was stealing company data. I wonder if you would ever have a problem that it ever became pu public knowledge. I would say yes, he would. Mr. Delight, I believe he would have been in considerable trouble. Your identity was as a company data thief was made public. Ugh. Mr. Wright. What are you trying to do by bullying your own client? Huh. Men are like colonies of bacteria. The more heat you apply, the faster they grow. That's exactly right. Well then, feel free to keep up the heat, my little lawyer amigo. Little lawyer amigo? Yes, so come on, provide some evidence to back up your assertion. Why would Mr. Delight want to keep the data stealing secret from going public? I guess I just present his wife. Take that. Take that. Mr. Delight, what you said now just doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? What doesn't? I think you must have been scared. Very scared. Of having a certain person find out your secret. So I presented the right evidence. I just had to, and then I even pressed on that same statement. All that, I feel like I got cheated there. I'm not gonna lie, chat. <laughs> So I had to repress the same statement after I did the other one. And even then it was still in response and nothing about his response changed. Oh, that's so annoying. Other than the fact that the other lawyer stepped in since he knew more details. Whatever. He gulps. A certain person. Miss Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Well, but I, I, listen to me. My Desi, she's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Ugh, the dough. Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit, for which he was fired. Unable to face his own wife, someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. And that is how this murder came about. Oh. Hmm. No. Everything is falling neatly into place for him. Don't talk about my Desi like that. Or you'll be sorry. You just threaten everybody? What an idiot. Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped in just 20 minutes. Clearly, there was sufficient motive for murder. He stole data for his wife, and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. The motive is clear. Let's move on. Uh. What happened at the crime scene at one in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come now, tell us. We're all ears. Witness testimony at the CEO's office.
When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. Suddenly, I sat on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. Oh, so he's wearing the costume at the time. Interesting. When I came to, Mr. Bullard was lying there, dead. One more second chat. Okay, we're good to go. I see. So suddenly hit on the forehead, huh? I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. He said that Master Mass struck him on the head from behind. Of course, Sammy turned out to be the culprit himself. That was all a lie. Huh. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. Well, what are you saying? I really was attacked. Bang. We'll find out if what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. Got that, Mr. Trite? Don't go easy just because he's your client. If I see any sign that you are, I'll treat you to another cup of my special blend. No need to worry about that, Mr. Godot. I have faith in Rod. I know he didn't do it. And so thoroughly whipped in 20 minutes if we get everything from the second game. I think so. Okay, so we need to press him at the... If I haven't been wearing that. We definitely need him to acknowledge he had a costume. Hold it. That. Please clarify what you're referring to. Why, my mask to mask costume, of course. Wait just a moment. Mask to mask. Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? Just to be on the safe side, I dress as mask to mask. And then, I descended upon the office of the CEO of KB Security. What? Nick, did you know about this? He never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. Oh, Gato's visor steaming. Probably from all the coffee. To be honest, that thing must be super hot with all the coffee, too. And I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really likes to keep secrets. I'm sorry. I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Wait. That's not right, um. You know, sometimes things just slip your mind. Ah. My sixth cup of coffee is staring at me coldly. Bang. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. I'd been killed if I hadn't been wearing my mask to mask costume. I don't think there's anything I can do with this yet. I think I need to press them again. I don't see what else I would press here. I'll just press it again. Why were you dressed up as mask to mask? Why, because I'm mask to mask, of course. What are you talking about? Mask to mask trial is being held next door. Uh, yes, I guess so. Anyway, at that time... Oh, wait, are they acknowledging there's more than one judge in this universe? I feel like we've only ever seen one judge. I feel like they're missing a real opportunity to have guest judges. Do you know what I mean, chat? Missed opportunity. I thought I was being blackmailed over the mask to mask issue. So I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh boy. Let me tell you, it's a real pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I expected. Took a lot longer. What is he talking about? You gotta press harder. Um, what do you mean by took a lot longer? Oh, opening the safe, of course. My cape got caught on the safe door, you see. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Bullard's body. What an idiot. Well, what was that? Back up a second. Yes. You were the one that hid the body in the safe. Uh, well, yeah. 
Did he just shout inconceivable? Bang. What? Now he's referencing the Princess Bride? Holy, this game is so chock full of pop references. How many have I been missing? I mean, I feel like I've been catching several, but wow. That, that is a random thing to reference. Like, it, was the script of the game that way, or did they just insert random pop references with the translation team? I honestly am really curious. Because the way the judge is acting at times doesn't feel like... The other games judge, and a couple of the other characters are also kind of odd. Why? Just why? What reason could you have? What were you thinking? That's more of what the judge would normally say. Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Music kicks in, and what a question. Uh, what? The answer is simple. When they take them off. As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. You mean that Mr. Delight hit the body because he's the murderer? Ah, you're not as stupid as you look. His metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business, do you? Ah, uh, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Bang. Witness, make sure you add this to the testimony. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Like a storm front is moving in over the Fairweather Judge. Panicked and hit the body in the safe. Took about ten minutes. What do you mean you panicked? Is this in reference to the buzzer? Let's press on this. Hold it! Why did you hide the body in the safe anyway? Well, because it wouldn't fit in a drawer. But um, shh, I guess. Uh, that's not exactly what I meant. When I saw that corpse, I kind of lost it. I thought, if they find his corpse, they'll think I did it. Ah, I think you had a simpler reason than that. It's because you killed him. That's why you spent ten minutes hiding the body. Hmm, that certainly makes more sense. Uh, hold on. Ten minutes. What is it, Nick? I just had a thought. Are there circumstances? Do you normally try to hide the body? Spend ten whole minutes to do it? Under those circumstances? What circumstances? Oh! Hey, Nick. You think his behavior was so strange? Why don't you present some evidence that would show what those circumstances were? That's it. Take a look at the court record. Okay, so I don't think I needed to... I didn't need to press. This is just confirming I can present evidence now. We'd heard this from Mr. Delight yesterday, didn't we? Not much in the testimony either. Oh, now we're going through the normal ones. Alright, so let's present the buzzer. Either from the fact that it went off... Because we, we know it did go off according to the notes. Even though it doesn't say it here, which is a little concerning now that I see it doesn't say it. Do I have- Oh, I have the buzzer record. Okay. Okay, that was almost a mistake I made. Okay, we do have the record. Because I was looking at this and I'm like, where's the record information? I forgot we got a different piece. Okay, now we can present the buzzer record here. That should be good. Objection! Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? And what might this be? Record for the emergency buzzer that connects the CEO's, CEO's office to security. The button in the office is pressed. The security team is supposed to come running. According to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. What? what Mr. Rondelight truly was the murderer. He would have ran as soon as that buzzer sounded. After all, a security guard would have been heading his way. Objection! Objection! Ha! Huh. Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there was security personnel in the building. Objection! Objection! Up until one year ago, my client was working as chief of security. 
There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. Objection. Objection. Fist slam. But, as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact the guard was a pathetic loser. <laughs> wow. Wow, I wasn't ready for that. Damn. Fe Phoenix burning those bridges real fast. <laughs> Holy. Anyway, let's continue again. The fact the guard was a pathetic loser, who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend, wasn't anywhere in the vicinity. It was not something Mr. Delight could have known. <laughs> Damn, that's on legal record too. That is brutal. Objection. Objection. Ugh. Again. Remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer going off. Are you sure Phoenix can be super defamation? That was brutal. That was just, like, so unnecessary. It's not even just, like... what The pathetic loser combo is just a wombo combo on him. Objection. Objection! This buzzer is extremely loud. There's no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscious? What do you mean by that? Ugh. Another coffee. I wonder who's canonically serving him the coffee. Like, is he is he just, like, producing it with telekinesis? Like, is there just somebody with, like, 13 or 15 cups, like, at all times in a tray next to him? We know his limit is... Maybe that's why his limit is 17. Maybe that's all that fits on the tray. <laughs> right, chat? Like, like there's there's a whole tray that holds 16, and then his assistant holds one. Is that how it works? Fine, let's hear your theory. Recall the defense testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed. Willing to wager he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted. Promethean Incorporated says, while well, most people use the same mug and have the coffee pot to refill from. I mean, he keeps getting more mugs. I don't ever see him take it. In fact, what happens to the mugs? I'm not entirely convinced. I'm not entirely convinced they're not in just little pre-made mug, pre mugs so they can slide them to him. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I, you, know, you never see him pass the coffee mug back. I also like to think like two is right. There's just a stack of coffee cups as well. It is the Phoenix universe. I would like to think they do it in the most ridiculous way possible. Like, having four or five, like, pots brewing constantly on the side. No, 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 no. He pours them all <laughs> into little mugs and brings them with them. Anyway, a conscious, so he fainted. That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. Well, welcome, Promethean. I hope you're doing well. So, what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out. The buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious, it can only mean there was another person in that room. That's right. Whoever it was, they knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. Bang. Order in the court. Mr. Wright, this... This is... Objection. This is preposterous. It was this kid. Von Delight, who was the one who killed Kane Buller. Objection! Then who pressed the buzzer? It was... The victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. Oops, we can disprove that. There's no fingerprints on the buzzer. He didn't die right away. Must have held on long enough to push the button. Dango says the theory is there's two mugs, and in between scenes he slides it back perfectly into the coffee machine. Ooh, interesting theory. Interesting. We know he gets at least more than one type of brew, so we know it's not one pot. So maybe he has a line of machines to get the different brews. Ah! Hmm. So Kane Bullard sounded the buzzard himself. What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? I need to prove the real criminal was there at the, the scene. Why do they keep saying the real criminal? But how? Can I prove that it wasn't Kane Bullard who sounded the buzzard? 
Yes, I'm gonna say I can prove it. The defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. The piece of evidence proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. So if we present it directly, now we can do this, because there's no fingerprints on it. Almost made a mistake there earlier. Take that! I believe this is the piece of incontrovertible evidence you were looking for. The emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. <laughs> See, like, it just, it just summons to his hand. Like, maybe, maybe he also has, like, a... Maybe it's, like, remote-controlled, and his left hand has, like, a little clicker device. <laughs> right, chat? Maybe that's how it works. He just clicks it, and then his hand's ready to catch. Hey, come now. Come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. Oh, judge, that's you every day. That doesn't change. This button has no fingerprints on it. Mr. Bullard had really pressed it himself. Naturally, he would have left his fingerprints behind. He food at the coffee. Objection. Ron Delight. Obviously wiped them off. Objection. Why would he? The garb could have come at any moment. Exactly, laugh track. I, f I feel like at this point, I, I might need to just leave the laugh. I do have a laugh track. I've never added it to the, the, the bot because there's always the stream delay. But I feel like I need to just have it open when I'm streaming. <laughs> this game in particular has had a couple moments where we just have it go off. The funny part is I think I typed it so often, I think it'll just pop up if I search it. Indeed. Thank you, Laugh Track. Objection. Objection! The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as mask to mask. And mask to mask always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have to wipe the button free of fingerprints? Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! Ah, oh, it would see. Jeez, this is not good for his health. I've been forced to eat crow. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? We are going with some very obscure phrases, Chad. I'm telling you, I, it just... I know this is a saying. I, I'm pretty sure it means to be, you know, if you're humiliated, you're forced to admit mistakes or something along those lines. But it's like... I don't know what those... I don't know if they would know these idioms. It must be the translation team. Like, this to me is just, like, an odd thing. I would never expect to hear this in, like, a, a Japanese-oriented game. But anyway, I, I guess it's the translation team. I mean, they were referencing, I think, Nickelodeon earlier, so I guess that matches. I wonder what blend number crow-flavored coffee is. However, if the real killer was there at the scene... Why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? Dot, dot, dot. What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Ah. Looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. They're on to you, Nick. Oh no, they're also on to Blue Downer too. He doesn't know what's going on either. Hmm. Just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. The real culprit killed the Mr. Bullet at around 1 a.m. Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place, right? Oh, wrong person. That's why that said that. The killer clobbered Mr. Delight. Then sounded the buzzer. Well, that is loud. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed. Security was supposed to respond. Hmm. Bang. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. Oh, you've got some guts. I like that in an opponent. 
Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? They didn't mean to, to find out what it did. But we're gonna say to call the security guard. The killer knew if they pressed the button, a guard would come running. And that was exactly what they wanted. Do you mean to say the killer called the guard on purpose? Yes. Although as it turned out, he never showed up. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Oh, uh, sort of a reference to the first game with the clock. Sort of. Or coffee chat. Ah, oh, what a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in. No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, King Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And the third person, the real killer, who you definitely can't identify by the silhouette with that ridiculous magnifying glass he has on his face. It could be anybody, chat. They really want to make sure you know who it is, chat. Hypothetically, yes. Now then, in this situation, the real killer made an escape. What would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Ron Delight. And if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think that I was the murderer. Yes, that was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron Delight for the murder. Sniffing the coffee, drinking the coffee. I'm gonna slam it. He pooed it. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! Ah, oh, it would seem. That was a fast coffee. I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, you've been made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Laugh Track. Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Or wait, wait a second. I'm the one and only Master Mask, so... Nick, I mean the real killer is... We're going to drag that person in here right now. But, but, who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity. They also knew that he had been called to KP security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. Bang. Now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Rondelight for the murder of Kane Bullard? Well, we're gonna bring in Mr. Magnifying Glass himself. Wherever he is in this list. Why don't I see him? Oh, there he is. Mr. Luke at me. Take that! Take that. Detective Luke at me. He's the only one who could have done it. Ace Detective... Look at me. You mean, Mask to Mask did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in court next to us is not Mask to Mask at all. He is an excuse me. He is an actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order. The Mister Right. Explain yourself. Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime, subject to a capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. When Luke Atme confessed, there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, the famous detective was unmasked as, well, as mask to mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he found guilty of grand larceny. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty, Master Mask had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lordly Taylor. In other words, being found guilty as Master Mask was Luke Atme's airtight, Twitter type, an unassailable alibi. A guilty verdict as an alibi? There we go. That sounds like a break in the trial. You know, it's almost time. Or what? For Luke Atme's verdict. 
It was a pretty simple trial, after all. We're going to stop this trial and install that one. We need to do it now. Of course. That's assuming you have proof that Detective was the one who committed the murder. Dot 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 exclamation mark. Do we approve? I mean, I could probably use this picture at some point to denote the paint marks, but whatever. Mr. Luke Atme's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. We were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of his true crime. Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. Are you really sure about this? Ah, uh, but that's only good when your life's the ante. Mr. Wright, I, I believe in you. Mr. Delight. So, so, so please, I'm begging you! Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? Phoenix, oh, come on. Let her, hashtag, let her rest in peace. Why is she in this case? No! Can we please go one case without her doing this? So ridiculous. Poor Mia. She's she's never gonna go to the Great Beyond chat. At this point, we might as well just call it the revolving door. Phoenix. What was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client. Take the path path of trust. That voice. It sounds like... Mia! Your Honor, the defense requests an immediate recess. Huh. So that's your answer, huh? Bang. Very well, I've decided as well. This court will now take a 20-minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, we summon Mr. Luke at me at to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. Number 14th, 11.58 a.m. This is a court, courtroom number five. <laughs> well, Sir Detective at me. <laughs> I have to say, Mr. Payne, you performed splendidly. Oh no, Sir Detective at me. You were the one who... Oh, there we go. We finally get to see a new judge. At least they didn't summon her, right? Maybe. Is this just like the judge's younger brother or something? That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. This court finds the defendant Luke at me. Hold it! Hold it. Wait. Don't hand down your verdict yet, please. Are they going to show who's on the defense? Well, well, sir lawyer. Welcome to my courtroom. Whoa, that is a face. Oh my god. What are, what are with his eyes? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't take a drink there because I was about to rehydrate. I would have done the real life spit take. What is that face? <laughs> Holy. Oh my god. That, I almost feel like that has to be an emote. What is that? Who is this hoser? What is going? What is going? Both the face and the dialogue is is quite something. <laughs> this one is special. This one is indeed special. It was like, I just, again, like, I know what a hoser is, but it's just kind of like, but why, though? Wait, something. Yeah, it's just kind of like one of those things. I, I don't know why he accused him of basically, the only, the only context... 
I was about to say he's also Canadian. I was gonna say the only contents I can think of is that I he thought he was Canadian for, Canadian for some reason. Again, it's a very strange use of that, especially given no context. My name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. I wish to file an accusation against this man, Luke Atme. Accusation? You accuse Master Mask. That man is not Master Mask. He's just a ruthless murderer. What? To be continued. That judge's face, though, that is quite something. So far, so good. October 14th, 12, 14 p.m. Just a court defendant lobby number four. My sis? I could have sworn I heard Mia's voice. But then she's still alive. Inside your heart. Nikki boy. Oh, Miss Delight. Is it true that detective... Oh, that that detective is the real killer? To be honest, you don't have any definitive proof. He's the only one who could have done it. But wasn't he at Lord Lee Taylor that night? Not to mention, I don't exactly know his motive. I mean, why would Detective Atme want to kill Kane Bullard? Oops, it's almost time. Better get back to the courtroom. We need to find some solid proof. And it's gonna happen sooner rather than later. October 14th, 12.21 p.m., District Court, courtroom number 6. Bang. I guess- I guess they did choose not to summon her, at least. I guess that's progress, question mark. Now then, this court is back in session. Mr. Luke at me, please take the stand. Do you have any kind of evidence to convict dot 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 oops, yeah. Well, well, how do you do, sir lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. Actually, I'm trying to remember the voice I used for him. I might be doing it wrong. Let me think about it. An alibi by the name of Master Mask. I'm sorry. I'm afraid even the great Luke at me has no idea what you mean. I think that may be what I was going for last time. Of course. I've been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could know what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant's seat all day long, correct? Being tried is mask to mask. Indeed, it's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, even gave me a generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example. So, you continue to insist that you are, in fact, Mask to Mask. Imagine him having a Kepka-like voice for some reason, maybe. Of course! Bang. Very well then, look at me. Let us begin with this simple question. It's a pretty good one. They- they did call- he did call himself the Chaos Clown. So you would be 100% justified with picking Kepka. I respect that. Or straight up Joker, if he's a Joker from Batman. Both of them would work. On October 12th at 1 a.m., Kane Bullard was murdered. Where were you at that time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Um, thanks. <laughs> I'll judge. All right, Mr. Atme, the night of the murder. Speak. You're gonna say he's all ears. We're all ears. Oh no, I'm figuring out their catchphrases, chat. That's not good. <laughs> As you wish, sir prosecutor. The alibi. 
I was stealing the urn as Master Mask, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. The time at which the camera captured Master Mask was the same time as the murder. Hmm. It seems the main point of discussion will be this photo of the crime scene. Everything else up until that was all part of his plan. It has to be a secret to this picture as well. Even the great mask to mask cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I have a verdict to receive. Hold it! Hold it. Unfortunately, Mr. Atme, we still have to do your cross-examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. I think he's trying to say that you're full of it, Nick. The only thing that's full of it is his alibi. Well, I guess we'll just continue to point out the difference between when the statue was moved, the paint in the photo, and the timestamp of the photo. So I guess we have to get him to explicitly acknowledge those in order to maybe then catch him on it. Um, and more than enough time. Right, let's press him on the time first and then go backwards in case the order matters. Let's start with the time because then we could go the pathetically easy. Let's do that. Let's press the statement. Hold it! Not the camera th that took this photograph. Oh, come now. It's all too clear what you're thinking. Huh? You think I altered the timestamp on the photograph, don't you? I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Lordly Taylor, and on top of that, Lordly Taylor's staff that printed the picture's data. Unfortunately for the defense, there's no way the picture could have been altered. Thing. I see. Looks like I'd better find something else that could be suspicious. So, this alibi is false. It has to be, or he couldn't have killed Mr. Bullard at KB Security. But, I'm not really spotting anything unusual. There are two possibilities. Either the mask to mask in the photo is fake, or the photo itself is. Alright, so we'll do... I had more than enough time. Hold it! I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point. That's right. That was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor 10 days before the heist. That would mean you sent out the card after you began your security watch, right? Indeed. There was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was the perfect opportunity to steal my latest target. I see. You truly are evil, aren't you? Yes, evil is what I am. Hey, Nick. Isn't there something odd about this? Hmm? Detective Amy was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? If the urn was stolen from Lordly Taylor while he was the only one watching it, he have no way to maintain his perfect ace detective persona. You know, that's true. It's kind of odd. Alright. Let's, let's press on the photograph to see if we could get more to his statement to be added. Or at least bring up the photograph. So by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here, is that correct? Indeed it is, that is it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. Surely even you understand by now. Lordly Taylor provided that camera. There's no way I could have tampered with it. That means I could not have killed Kane Bullard, unless I had an accomplice. Hmm. Come on, think long and hard about that night. The basement warehouse and the picture that supposedly captures it. Gotta be here. Is there something funny about this picture? We're gonna say you bet there is. Are you implying this picture is a fake? You bet I am. Definitely something strange about this picture. Took a look around the basement warehouse that night before the theft took place. 
There's something in this photo that doesn't match my memory of that night. Well, we're gonna point out the paint spill. Very well. Then let's hear what you have to say. What about this photograph do you find funny? And then I just pointed the judge. So I don't think it really matters where I point it out. I mean, it it's kind of a large picture portion of the photo, so I'm hoping it doesn't matter where I point. Take that. The funny part is right here. Why, this... This is a blood stain. Uh, blood. Now this case is getting interesting. Uh, not exactly. This stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint. And peach colored at that. From blood to peaches. That sure loves going on as wild tangents. Is that a wild? The problem with this photograph is not the paint. Yeah, it's the lack of the statue there. The problem is, when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse, it turns out that something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Bang. Well, Mr. Wright, what is supposed to be in this picture instead of the paint stains? Well, we're gonna show the photo here. So maybe it's one of those things where, okay, so if he didn't alter the timestamp, maybe he just took more than one photo. I don't remember how many times they said it went off. Because it could have been, like, on a different night of the crime. So he could have done it, like, the night before, for example, before the statue arrived. Maybe that's what they're implying with it. Let's go ahead and present the statue. Take that! Take that. The supervisor of the treasure exhibit stated the following. Well, there's a good reason for that. The day of the crime around noon. The golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. I realized the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I myself was there the night the theft took place. I saw the statue in that spot. This picture was truly taken on that night. That statue should have been there. Objection. Objection. But when I went there the day after the theft, the statue of the old bag was sitting in the corner. Hmm. Perhaps it was somehow accidentally pushed there. Your Honor, the statue is slightly larger than yourself and quite heavy. It'd take more than an accidental push to move it that distance. Ah, huh. in that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why the statue was moved that night? Can you do it, Nick? Never mind who moved it. Real question is, why did they move it? Hmm. Bang. Well, Mr. White, hope you're prepared with your answer. Now then, who was the one that moved the golden statue on the night of the crime? Well, I mean, I would have to assume that I'm just presenting Luke at me here. Take that! Take that! The person who moved the statue was none other than Luke at me. Come now, sir lawyer. There you go again on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have for your strange delusions? It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement warehouse that night. That is indeed very simple. However, why would I want to move a heavy golden statue? The reason for moving the golden statue. Here's where our battle really begins. Bang. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move that statue? The reason can be found here in this photograph. Look at me. You pretended to be masked to mask. Create an alibi by showing you're at Lordly Taylor that night. But this photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been there, your lie would be exposed like a cheap film at a drugstore. Oh, okay. That is why you had to move the statue. A single fatal flaw? Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. Just where in this picture does this lie exist? Okay. So, let's walk through. So it can't be him. I'm assuming I point out the timestamp, because he had to move the statue so that way it wouldn't be shown at the same time, and that's fine. Let's just present the timestamp. This should be good enough. Take that! Actually, the line in the photo is the timestamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. But I didn't question Luke Abney went to KB security and murdered Kane Bollard. 
Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been at Lord Lee Taylor at this time. Bang. But what does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember, if you will, Your Honor. When was the statue placed besides the warehouse door? Oh, well, the statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime. It was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Lukadmi had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim. And so, in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murder took place. Exactly. What the? Of course, the statue hadn't yet been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Ah. Oh. So on the day of the crime, Mr. Abney must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. What? Why? It's something that wasn't supposed to be there. I've been brought down in place where it wasn't supposed to be. And that is why Luke Atme had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match the way it had been in this photo. Ah! Bang. Order, order. Mr. Atme, is this true? One moment, your honor. Have you forgotten this? What's that? The data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. Objection. Objection. It's true the camera had been set up by the Lordly Taylor staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. Ah! Ah! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order! Mr. Godot, what is the meaning of this? Oh no, how many coffees, chat? He's canonically at least on his seventh. Godot, I warned you about making me wait. Now put down that coffee. Oh. Well, I guess he answered my question. That was good timing. My eleventh cup. I promise to drink no more than 17 during a trial. Which means I'm still good till the last drop. However, the defense has a very good point. A good point. So what? We are all but travelers on a road of infinite points. I'm just kind of shaking my head. This game is getting a bit out there with some of the dialogue. Um, I think he got his points mixed up with his other points. Though you say this photograph was taken ahead of time. The statue was moved in order to make it match. That's a very interesting idea. However, there's one point that can't be denied. Which is... Oh no, another cop. That it's only a possibility. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe. Oh no, not the coffee. It never reached their dreams. That's very true. <laughs> what? No way, don't fall for that, your honor. Hey, Mr. Damask. Yes? There's no funny business in your actions as mask to mask. There should be no problem with telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. Yes. Please provide this court with your testimony. About your plan to seal the sacred urn. Okay. Sacred urn heist. I first received the request from Lordly Taylor about 20 days ago. Urn was placed in a box and Zavari was then sent to the warehouse. Uh, 
and so I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure. They sent my card ten days beforehand. I then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. You mentioned the card. Oh, oops. I think that's the contradiction. So, he said it's in the warehouse. But in the note, he mentioned that it's on display. So, I think we could just catch him on this. And then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. At last, I held the urn in my hands for the first time at 1am on October 12th. Pretty much all the stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but we will find the truth hidden in the nuggets of new information he gave. Witness, you're sure there are no mistakes this time. Savari. Bang. Very well then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Might be a little preemptive. Also, did I never recover health from earlier? Oh, I didn't. Well, that's actually kind of interesting. Uh... Well, you know what? Let, uh... Uh, we'll go for it. Objection! Objection! I was worried if I'd have to press or not, and I was like, you know what? Let's throw it out there. We still got more bar to fail with. Mr. Adney, you really are a master mask. And you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course. Is there a problem with that calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Master Mask had written. Take good care of the speckled urn. Oh, they're talking about the paint. That also... That also, I guess that also works, technically. Take good care of the speckled urn. Now, the speckled urn here really refers to the pink pattern on the sacred urn. Yes, that is true. But so what? Truth be told, there's no way Master Mask could have known about this pattern. Yep, because it happened on the job. What do you mean? This pink spotted pattern on the urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear until after the urn had been taken to Lordly Taylor. Hmm. Not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day the sacred urn was taken to the warehouse, the urn was broken to, due to human error. Should I say, an error-prone human. That's when the pink paint got on the urn. Ugh. You can't be serious. And yet this calling card clearly mentions the paint pattern. Which means, Detective Adney had seen this urn long before the crime ever took place. In fact, he saw it when this fake photo was taken. Oh, that's fair. Ooh, indeed. Oof. Because this photo was a fake, your alibi for the night of the murder no longer holds water. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Oh, well, I got a small detail wrong. I still know who did it and when how it was done, so I don't really care. We'll go further. Witness, do you have anything to say for yourself? Uh, mm, uh. Alright, that did it. He's broken. Um, Nick, I think it's still a little early for the victory pose. Huh? Ah. Uh, so sad. No one has any conviction these days. Conviction, you say? That's 14. Yesterday, we all decided unanimously that this man was Master Mask. Now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle? That's a good point. No way, don't fall for that too, Your Honor. You're the one. Oh, you say that Luke Gatme was the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then let me ask you this. Why would he do that? <laughs> An excellent point. Dot 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 exclamation mark. Motive, Mr. Wright, motive. Why you my merry mur- Oh. Kind of a weird sentence. Why you my merry murderous motive manifest? Nick, he's getting a second wind. If 
Rufus prepared an alibi and pinned his crime on Ron Delight, as you say. He must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one with any motive we've seen is Ron Delight. Isn't that right, detective? Indeed. According to my own research, the boy's motive is clear. Bang. Without a motive, it's nearly impossible to prove guilt in a murder case. Is it, though? I mean, I guess you can't prove a certain degree of murder, but I mean, like, you, you don't... You don't need motive if you literally have, like, camera footage of the person dying, for example. I don't think- I don't- I wouldn't call that nearly impossible, but whatever. Now then, maybe you can enlighten us as to what the defendant's motives were. I'd be honored to, Sir Old Timer. Doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. Motive for murder, witness testimony. I, look at me, had no points of contact with the victim whatsoever. Hmm. King Bowler decided to investigate mass to mass, and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Bowler who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. And it was again Mr. Bowler who harbored a grudge against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. Mr. Bullard's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is Mask the Mask. That is why Mr. Delight saw it fit to kill Kane Bullard. Truly a tragedy. Oh my god, a guy stabbed a dude, but why? Don't know, guess he is on the murder. I mean, according to that judge's logic, I'm just saying, like, they're just... The, the words impossible are, like, a huge stretch. <laughs> like, I would think it's fairly common to not always know the reason why things were done. I mean, I guess he's so used to confessions or something like, or something near close to that, that it's kind of ridiculous. So the victim, Kane Bullard, blackmailed the defendant. This is the blackmail letter found in the defendant's apartment. And writing test confirms that Mr. Bullard was indeed the one who wrote the letter. What? Blackmail letter written by Bullard. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Begin your cross-examination. Okay. So I'm gonna press on the he wrote it comment. Hold it! You mean this blackmail letter right here? It says bring 50,000. Handwriting is, without a doubt, the victim's. There's no mistake. We have an official report to prove it. But I don't see an addressee on this letter anywhere. Addressee. This letter was discovered in Ron Delight's apartment. Apartment, excuse me. Mr. Delight did show up at the designated place in time. The fact there is no addressee here is irrelevant. I wonder. What's up, Nick? It's out of thought. What if that blackmail letter wasn't meant for Mr. Delight? Oh, you have any evidence of that? Well, I think according to the list we have earlier. Where's it at? Don't I have it? Oh, am I hallucinating? Where is it? Not this. There it is. So the 50,000 doesn't match anything that's on the list. So I think we can use this as supplemental evidence. Or, potentially... I mean, at some point, we probably have to present this, too. Because he also says he doesn't know him, even though they're, like, literally in the same photo with each other. Whoa, do you have any evidence of that? For some reason, I just can't shake the feeling. There's something not quite right about this blackmail letter. Well, everyone, are you quite satisfied? I guess I can just call into question the fact that it doesn't have a person attached to it. 
Because I, I guess if we were to read this more literally, the red diamond, I don't think is mentioned on the list of items. So that could be preset evidence. And we also know Luke at me literally showed us the red diamond in question. So I think between either pointing out the fact that the money total doesn't match the other ones or the fact that it explicitly says red diamond or the fact that he says it's that he's, it's addressed to Ron Delight when in theory it should be addressed to Mask to Mask, which he wouldn't necessarily know per se. Okay, there, there's a lot of reasons I think this could work. We'll see which one the game picks out of this. And we'll just follow up on whichever point it decides it wants to take first. Let's present this. Objection! Objection! Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective Atme? Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's alright. You said this letter was addressed to Ron Delight. I can't help but notice one major contradiction. Contradiction? I don't know where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying things like that. You're the one to talk. Times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? Indeed. Time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contradicting evidence in the content of the blackmail letter. Um... Which, which one does it want first is the question. I guess we can... I mean, is is it being very stupid literal with me? Like, is it just like... So, am I overthinking it? Is it gonna be like, oh, it's it's a, it's a red diamond. This is clearly not the red diamond he's asking about. It's a blue diamond. Is that what it wants? It wants me to do this first? I mean, I'll do it. Take that, Take that if that's what you want. Take a good look at this newspaper clipping. I mean, again, like, he, like, why do I have to present evidence? The guy has it on his finger. It's not even hidden. Whatever, it's whatever. Try not to get tilted by the stupidness of the moment. It paints a picture of the tear of the Eminon, the stolen jewel. What about it? The problem is the jewel's color. Color? I'm not much, I'm not much for discussing color myself. Oh, that's kind of messed up. He wouldn't be able to see the color. That's actually kind of messed up. According to the clipping, the color of the stolen jewel was blue. I like how it says according to the clipping, but it doesn't actually state that. We just have to see the image. However, the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. Take that red diamond you received the other day. We're red. Which means, the red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tear of Eminon that Master Mask stole at all. Objection. Objection. Bang. And your point is, Mr. Trite? So you're trying to say the blackmail letter was intended for someone else? Yes, there's many reasons this could have been intended for somebody else. That is what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, is that what you're trying to say? Right, Nick? Please stop repeating them. Yes. This is who Kane Bullard was actually blackmailing. Okay, well, this is easy. We just present Luke at me here. Take that! Naturally, it was you, Detective At Me. Do you have some sort of basis for that claim? He says his hand in the air with the red diamond. Right, chat? Do you know what I mean? Like, hello? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> it's, it's like he's actively waving the evidence in our face. Right, chat? Like, throw your hands in the air. These people are blind. Yeah! Raw, indeed. You've been personally involved in every single mass to mass case. And in the last case, you recovered what was stolen and received a jewel as your reward. A, a jewel? Probably the one wrapped conspicuously around your finger. That red diamond ring. Uh, uh. That is the diamond referred to in the letter. Okay, we got there eventually. That's the important thing. Again, there's many, many other things we could have used for evidence there, but that's fine. Which means that Kane Bullard wrote that letter in order to blackmail you. 
<laughs> bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Um, um, order, I say. Objection. Uh-oh, chat another coffee mug. It seems you've gone too far with your childish pranks, Mr. Trite. <laughs> Red, question marks, yeah. Uh-oh. I don't like the way he said that. Ken Buller, blackmailing Luke at me. Are you for real? Yes, I am. Nick, come on, stand up to him. Bang. Then answer me this. The blackmail letter contains the following passage. You don't want your identity revealed to the world. Yes, it certainly does. Kane Bullard threatened to make Luke Atme's identity public knowledge. An identity he wanted to keep a secret. So just what was that identity? Atme killed Kane Bullard because he was afraid of his secret becoming known. What was the identity he wanted to keep secret? This is what it all comes down to, Nick. The identity that Luke Atme wanted so desperately keep secret was... An ace detective mass to mass a blackmailer. Well, by process of elimination, it has to be a blackmailer. Luke Atney was a blackmailer. Objection. Objection. Hey now, isn't that a little different from what you've been saying? You said Kane Bullard was the one blackmailing Luke Atney. Are you saying Atney was blackmailing someone else on top of that? Uh... You have to admit, that does sound a little odd. It's not odd. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Ken Bullard was blackmailing Luke at me. But, Rondelite was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. So do you start receiving blackmail letters after the incident? He says yes, a few days after the tears of Eminon heist. After that, I start getting the plans in the mail. I get incredibly detailed plans. Detailed plans? In which case... That would mean that Ron Delight was actually masked the mask. That is what we're claiming. Someone else came up with the plans, and he had Mr. Delight steal his targets for him. And that someone was none other than Luke Atme. Shush, silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What is? When you were in grade school, you received, you received the same report card every year. Careless, with the tendency to jump to conclusions. Am I wrong? How did you... You say that I, look at me, this blackmailing Ron Delight. In which case, I would actually know all about his relation to Mask to Mask. Well, yes. Rondelite started receiving plans from his second crime onward, correct? Which means, I learned of his identity when he committed that first crime. I'm just gonna present the newspaper clipping again. Good point. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. Oh, another coffee chat. Is that 16? In that case, let's see some hot, bitter evidence. Promethean says 16. Thank you, Promethean. During the first crime, how did Luke Atme know that Ron Delight was masked to mask? I mean, I have to present the clipping. I don't have anything else that shows them together. Take that! I think I see it. See what? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Gets into a lot of mischief trying to be the center of attention. What do you mean? This newspaper clipping. There's a picture of you and Ron Delight in his guard uniform. It seems that Master Mask didn't just disappear into thin air. He just took off his outfit and hid it in a bucket. <laughs> <I'm> so... <laughs> sorry, ch sorry, Chad. I read the next sentence. I'll try. <laughs> that that got me. That got a genuine laugh from me, actually. Hold on. Give me a moment. Okay, <clears throat> prepare myself. That, that sounds far too stupid to be true. Oh, it's, it's, it's very stupid. Correct. With tricks like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. And that's when you figured it out, Mr. Atme. For once, the judge was actually right. That's true. 
That's when you learn that under his mask, Mask the Mask was really Ron Delight. <laughs> uh, uh. What the? Wasn't he supposed to be Mask the Mask? Not only that, it looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. I can't believe it. He was just a slimy blackmailer. What a fraud. Trying to pass himself off as an ace detective. Dot, 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 dot. Why, you? How dare you expose me like that? Dot, dot, dot from Phoenix. Why, I? I mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life. I'm a famous and proud ace detective and, and also mask the mask. Why can't you understand that? I'm afraid you're neither a proud thief nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity. Why you? How dare you even imply I was not that smart? You're really fools. They say not even can compare your genius to mine. You're all jealous. So go, go and desecrate me, commemorate me. They stick to go down to have blackmail murder threats. <laughs> it's enough to make one laugh. Unfortunately, I was taking a drink just as he began that, so I missed a little bit of the beginning. Unfortunate with the auto-advancing text there. Kirk says, man, you have to be so bad you're worse than Phoenix and have to cheat. Wow, yeah, that's pretty bad. It would seem we finally arrived at the real answer. That was quite a performance by Mr. Atme. Bang. Bailiff, please prepare a cell for Mr. Atme. Objection. Objection. The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. Oh, 17. What do you mean? I'm already prepared to deliver my ruling. Promethean on the ball. This is the final coffee. Slam. Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears. And your claws weren't quite sharp enough, Mr. Trite. W what do you... It's true, you've proven a lot of things. Things like Luke Atme was a filthy blackmailer. The sound of him swallowing this coffee is very uncomfortable, it's certainly something. And that he wasn't at Lordly Taylor that night of the murder. That's right. That's why he's the one who killed Mr. Bo- But... There's still one thing you have yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse, doesn't mean he was at the murder scene. Bang. Therefore, if you can't prove this pitiful excuse for a man was at KB Security, then I don't see how a verdict can be delivered. No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Well, Mr. Wright, this is it. It's the final round. You gotta prove that at me was at Mr. Bullard's office and then that on that night. But can you really prove that? That's long enough. Mr. Trite, I want to hear your answer. That night, Luke Atme was at KP Security, and the defense... I don't know, can I actually prove this? I feel like I'm getting baited again, like the fifth trial in the first game. I don't think I do. I still haven't brought up Kane's list at all, which is annoying. I guess this is just a fake evidence piece. I mean, the only way I can really get him to prove it is to... I guess get him to confess whether or not... Something with the buzzer. I could try to catch him on the buzzer if we question him about that. Or if he talks about the sacred urn when he stole it, maybe I could catch him on this? Maybe? Because it was wiped of fingerprints initially, I think. Maybe? Or is that the other case? I might be thinking the other case. I'm gonna go with... can prove it? I don't think I can. I... I can't prove it. Just as I... Oh, excuse me. Just as I thought. But, 
We hear more of Detective Atme's testimony. Objection. Objection. Unfortunately, that's as far as you go, Mr. Trite. What do you mean? I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I mean. What? Have you forgotten? Look at me he is here after we interrupted his own trial. You have failed to prove that he committed the murder. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial. And face his guilty verdict as mask to mask. No. Well now, sir lawyer. Seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the ace detective as well as mask to mask. My verdict will verify that. Mrs. Rondelite will verify that he is the true murderer. Declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. That's enough deliberation over this witness. I can't believe this. This rate, Ron is. Don't give up now, Nick. We still have tomorrow. Look for more evidence and by then, it'll be too late. Huh? Why? Is he gonna finally mention Double Jeopardy? I've been thinking that for a while. Oh, they are gonna mention Double Jeopardy. Nice. Oh, wait, there's... Oh, we have, we have actual rules of the court. We have evidence law, and now we have Double Jeopardy. We're growing. Chat, chat, they're adding real life things, finally. Double Jeopardy. One of the basic rules of any court of law. Double Jeopardy? Rules accountability, I know. Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, that defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. This is a fundamental rule of all courts. And it applies to this witness as much as it applies to anyone else. Mr. Atme will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty as mask to mask, which means he will be innocent as far as the murder of Kane Bullard is concerned. I don't think this is a true double jeopardy though, because it's not the same crime actually, but that's fine. We'll, we'll let it pass. We're we're accusing of murder versus theft. Whatever. I, I guess there's uh, whatever, let's not overthink this. No way. The fact you were unable to prove Mr. Atme's guilt of that crime here means he will never again be tried as Kane Bullard's murderer. Well that makes more sense. Uh, ah! Fade to black. Now there's nothing I could possibly do to win. Even if Ron is proclaimed to be innocent, the real killer Luke Atme will go free. Bang. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. As long as there's no more testimony, I'm afraid I have to declare there will be no further questioning of this witness. Are there any objections? Bang. And I hereby end the cross-examination of Luke at me. Uh-oh, is Mia gonna speak in? I think I see it, Your Honor. When you were a child, this is what was on your report card every year. I'm a ghost! I'm a ghost this year, indeed. Has poor hearing and often makes mistakes as a result. Oof. How, how did you... Phoenix, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? A lawyer is someone who smiles, no matter how bad it gets. Damn it, chat. One day we'll get through... <laughs> we'll get through a more serious case without assistance from the great beyond. It's sad that the case where we basically forgot everything about how to be a lawyer was the only time we were not really handheld so far in the Phoenix Wright trilogy. That voice. No way. Long time no see, Phoenix. But Mia! This is the true power of the crane channeling technique. I know that it's really Maya who's standing before me, but right now she's my mentor, Mia Fey. Now, let's do this. But there's nothing more we could do, Mia. Without any more testimony, I can't cross-examine. Not yet. The testimony's not over yet. What do you mean? Your Honor, just now you said something very interesting. You've cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. 
Yes, that's true, but unfortunately, Your Honor, forgetting something earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. My verdict will verify that, just as Rhonda Lights will verify he's a true murderer, I declare with a force of base detectiveness. There we go. Yes, but these comments have no, uh, no relevance, but very well. We shall prove their importance via cross-examination. At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we the defense assert our right to question them. Is that all right with you, prosecutor? Hmm. I wonder how he's going to react to her, since I think he had a relationship with her. Is... is something the matter, Mr. Godot? Ah, oh, nothing. Oh, sir lawyer, it looks like you're one step too late. You think such falsehoods will do anything to me? Look at... Let's hear it. Huh? It's true, the witness has made some remarks. So then, let's hear this last bit of cross-examination. Mr. Godot, what are you... Bang. Very well then, Mr. Look at me. I'm going to allow the defense to cross-examine your earlier remarks. The defense would like to hear why you declared the defendant to be the true murderer. So please, give us one last bit of testimony. I... Uh, Phoenix, this is it. This is our absolute last chance. Yes, Chief. The last testimony. Witness testimony. Indeed, it is true that I was not at Lordly Taylor. I had to leave to see about another vitally important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph ready. My brilliant deduction was in but informed me that the true culprit was Ron Delight. Thanks to the key card and wallet, it was abundantly clear he was there. I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The finger... the, the button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Light was wearing his mask, him out, the mask outfit, which is why he left no prints. And, the blackmail letter, the victim likely just mistook the color of the jewel. Davari! Therefore, all the evidence points to that poor boy. Testimony actually seems to hold up pretty well. The witness's earlier remarks do not appear to have been hastily prepared. All of his points have been explained. None of them seem to contradict anything. But of course. But how did you know about the emergency buzzer? Yeah, that's a big oops. The police investigation documents went directly through me. I always look over all the documents. It's elementary, sir lawyer. Uh. Are you gonna make even more trouble for us now, sir lawyer? I will not allow any of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. We cannot postpone Luke Atme's trial any longer. This is your last chance. Hang on a second. It's just one chance. Ah, it seems that the party's about to begin. Well, Phoenix. There isn't any evidence that contradicts with that testimony. So it would see. What do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix, pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence, does it? At any rate, this is our last chance. You can't point out a case-breaking contradiction. You lose. That's all there is to it. Cup number 17. The last cup. Dun, dun, dun. It seems like the time has come to put an end to this trial. To find a fatal contradiction in this testimony, and I need to point it out without presenting evidence. Which means all I could do is find the contradictory remark and press it. Oh, interesting. Remember, you only get one chance. Ooh, 
So I don't get to press any statements, and I can't present evidence. That's an interesting turn of events. Alright, so let me, let me re-examine and then figure out if I had to pick exactly one where I think the contradiction is. Uh, Blue Taylor, don't care about those. Blue Clear, I'm not sure how- I guess he knew about those. Let me get out from the buzzer, which sounded only once. One did not have any fingerprints on it, why? It would have left prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. paying attention. This was a good one, by the way. Ooh, this is tough. I think a while ago... See, what I'm confused by is when I look at this, they don't mention the prince. Or am I remembering the previous? See, now I'm confused. See, that's the problem with playing them back to back, because I remember them talking about the fingerprints. So she originally cleaned it. The other one, that's why we have no prints. Ain't got on it. Which I guess, okay, so maybe, maybe I could take it in the reverse. So, if he had taken the urn and the paint was on it, maybe we could say that he should have left paint on it because it would have potentially been fresh at the time that it was taken. Maybe I could take that line if I have to present this piece of evidence. Maybe I have to think of the inverse. I think this- I'm just gonna go for this one. I'm gonna press. Hold it! Mr. Atme, about this last remark. Objection. Objection! You still don't get it, do you, Trite? This isn't the time to be pressing the witness on every little statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Goodell. What? Mr. Atme, if you finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder, yeah, he- I'm not sure how he would know about some of the things there, but we'll, we'll see where he goes with this train of logic. Let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Atme? The button did not have any fingerprints on it, why? Mr. Delight was wearing his ma- Is- oh, his- oh, I'm sorry, he said his- I missed that he said that. It's true. So he's acknowledging there's a second outfit, which is the contradiction. My bad. I don't know why I wasn't thinking about that. That was a little dangerous of me. We, we managed to get by that. Indeed. That's what I said. My deductions are absolutely foolproof. More like your deductions prove that prove that you're a fool. I I'm sorry. Whatever do you mean? For some reason, I'm starting to get very thirsty. When exactly did we learn the fact that... Mondelite was dressed as Master Mask when he went to the scene of the crime? Mask star to mask emblem, something like that. That was, um, it was just a few hours ago. Back when my sixth cup was looking at me with a cold stare. Yeah, he did mention the costume. I think I could still present the urn, though. I think the urn is still what we need to seal it in. So I was, I, I got a little ahead of myself there, I think. And I got a little lucky in some extent. But I still think I have the general gist of what's happening. That's right. The defendant had yet to tell anyone else this fact before this morning. Therefore... The only people who should have known this are those who have been watching this trial. Uh, uh. You understand now, Detective Atme. There's no way you should have known about that. Uh, uh. You were in the next courtroom being tried as mask to mask. So then enlighten us. How did you know about this piece of information? Uh, well, objection. Come on, this detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find out beforehand. Objection! And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That night, Mr. Delight was wearing his mask to mask outfit. There is one, and only one way, for Detective Atme to have found that out. Only one way, you say? Please recall, if you will, 
Mr. Delight's testimony. He had to make another one. Second, my client witnessed the real killer. Objection. But Mr. Delay never saw his attacker. There's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was Luke at me. Objection. It's with that statement that I'll turn this case on its head. Just what are you implying? Delay saw the real killer, correct? Now, if you turn that statement around, it stands to reason the real killer had also seen Ron Delight. Impossible. Detective Atme, you saw Master Mask at the murder scene that night. You saw him when you killed Kane Bullard and assaulted Ron Delight. That was the only way you could have known what Ron was wearing. Here we go, the big eruption. What the? <laughs> Take a good look, everyone! able to find a rival worthy of my genius. I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. That's the same line you gave yesterday. But there's a little more meaning behind it this time. <laughs> what an awfully complicated incident. Kane Bullard was blackmailing Luke at me, who is in turn blackmailing Ron Delight. Upon killing his blackmailer, Luke at me tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as Master Mask in order to escape his true crime. To that end, he came up with this plan to use the double jeopardy rule when making his alibi. Um, at any rate, it would seem we finally found the truth. Excuse me. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of murderer. Don't ignore me! Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Why wouldn't he be? Um, about the verdict. I know, you never committed any murder. That's right, I'm so glad you understand that, but... I, um... I really am, Master Mask! Huh? Well, thanks to that trial yesterday. I'm innocent now, right? Uh... What was it you said? Double Jeopardy? Now that you mention it, I've been careless. Careless? Uh, what do you think, Mia? Now he can't be tried because he's found innocent. As the defendant says, the rule of double Jeopardy is absolute. So we did use double Jeopardy to get him off. Okay. In the case, that is. So that's fair. A defendant can never be tried twice for a crime in which he is found innocent. Then, Master Mask is really innocent? It would seem so. For now. For now? Bang. Now then, this court finds the defendant not guilty, even though he did steal. Yay! It's a mockery of justice! Right, chat? Boy. This is really lucky. Wait, uh, I... This isn't so good after all. You see, the thing is, I still am Master Mask after all. October 14th, 3.35pm, just a court, defendant lobby number four. You did it, Phoenix. Thanks, Mia. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. It's because Maya doesn't call on me much these days. Please let her rest in peace. Oh? I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. But on the other hand, Maya... She seems kind of torn these days. You mean about becoming the master of the Crane Channeling School? Becoming the master. He's saying goodbye to our mother. Misty Fay, right? Watch over her, will you, Phoenix? Of course. Well then, see you around. Mia. Uh, Mr. Wright. Um, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Delay. Thank you so much. Uh, no, wait. Nothing really matters anymore, though. Not all this has happened. Come on, just be happy already. Maya, you've been cleared of the murder charge as it got off as mass to mass to boot. But, in exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? 
stealing security information from Pavey's security, becoming mask to mask. He did it all for one reason. For her. You mean your wife? Desiree? Yeah, woohoo, nothing wrong here, exactly. She hates criminals more than anything. Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some robbers, wasn't she? She always said how she hated sneaky criminals. I knew that. I knew that, but... Once I got fired from KB security, and I lost all the money I had, she wouldn't have any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure. So that's why you became Mask to Mask? Yes, but it's all over now. Broken bowl can never be put back together. Oh, okay, now we can present the urn. That's not true, right, Nick? Right. Really? Can things go back the way they were? You'll be fine, and Nick can prove it. I can? I don't wish you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if a bowl is broken, there's always a way to put it back together. I mean, well, they're obviously talking about the urn here. Oh well, it wasn't used in the case, but it was used here. Take that! The sacred urn. Jesse was the one who found this. Desiree, your wife. She's always believed in you, Ron. That's why you'll be fine. You don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> uh, sure. Aw, oh, there you are. Miss Delight, you did it, Ronnie. You're innocent. I'm so happy. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, but, um... I suppose you don't want anything more to do with me, do you? Ronnie, why didn't you talk to me about what was going on? I had no idea you'd quit KB security. Never imagined that you were really mess to mask either. Miss Delight, what are you going to do now that you know? You're not going to really leave him, are you? Come on, it's obvious, isn't it? How could I ever let a wonderful man like him get away? After all, my bike's really fast. So fast, there's no way he could ever get away. Um... Didn't you say that you hated criminals? Hmm? Oh. Only people who act all cowardly and sneaky. Like that detective. I see. My Ronnie went and declared his crimes before he committed them. Like a man. I just love a man who's so chivalrous. Chivalrous? I knew I was right about you. Every day I spend with you is filled with thrills and excitement. I guess that's one way to view it. Desi. Desiree, you really do love Ron, don't you? Nikki boy. Yes? I'm really glad I asked you to defend my Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, um... Take care of yourself. You too, Nikki boy. Gulps. Feel my face going red. Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya, congratulations! Oh, why are you here, Pearl? Yes. Talk about bad timing. Mr. Nick, how could you? Another man's life and life in front of Mystic Maya. No, no, no! I'll never forgive you, never ever. Um. Okay. I have a genuine question. How does she reach our face? I'm assuming she's slapping us in the face, right? Are we, like, kneeling down so her nine-year-old self can slap us? Like, how does that work logistically, chat? I mean, other than it being a not really funny physical abuse scene, because I don't really find that kind of stuff funny to begin with, it just, it calls to mind a lot of questions. Is she, like, hitting his hip or something? So just as the case came to a close, so too did my consciousness. The <laughs> assault in the courthouse, apparently. Ron said, a broken bull can never be put back together, but I know that's not true. Need to sue pearls, exactly. 
Did she, like, get, like, a leaping start from, like, <laughs> the bench? Like, how did she reach him, honestly? I mean, just look. Here's a perfect example of one that was put back together even better than before. Episode 2, The Stolen Turnabout, The End. Oh, no. No. Are we gonna really do the thing where she's, like, a serving lady? Also, that guy's hair that's not facing us, that is very 5Ds on the side, I'm just saying. Why could she possibly be dressed up like this? Is she taking a part-time job or something? I don't look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> put it that way <laughs> there's always like those maid cafes or whatever and that's the thing too remember this is supposed to be america people don't dress like this i'm just saying chat that i don't know why they even pretended like this takes place in the u.s i honestly really don't <laughs> I can be real with you this that is just not a thing i'm sorry not in the u.s anyway but i i guess since we completed it here it doesn't really make sense to start the next case for like a half hour Let's chat a little bit. So, how do we feel about the game so far? I guess this case was okay. I mean, as I said before, like, a big issue with it from, like, at least a mystery perspective for me is that there's not really any red herrings. So as soon as you just, like, present a couple of people, there's nothing else to really go against the initial assumptions. I guess the only real mystery, quote-unquote, so far in the game is, uh... Uh... I was about to call him Diego Armando, which I think it's technically his name. Um, Godot. I think technically Godot is the only mystery where maybe you wouldn't be able to figure it out the first time you play. And I could see people missing that, for sure. If they, especially if they didn't read uh, his name in the profile, I think, to help put it together for the, the guarantee there. So from that standpoint, you know, it it's it's not gonna work for me as a mystery game. As like a thing of personalities to witness and like a visual novel, I suppose. I think this case was better than some of the other ones. I mean, this is definitely better than Games 2's cases. So that that's safe to say. Do I like them more than Game 1? I'm not sure so far. I have to kind of reflect on it. I do like the concept of Double Jeopardy coming up. And I like, like, the courtroom stuff for the most part. It's just that there's some really weird lines, I think, that kind of bring it down a bit for me. Some of it is just kind of the random pop culture references that I just... Well, some of them I do understand. I just think they're very random. Uh, but otherwise, it feels like there are some translation errors, even in this version of the game. I mean, we saw what happened when I was looking at... Uh, I think I presented the Magatama to Maya earlier, and we got that weird statement. So it looks like not all of the sentences are correctly fleshed out, if that makes sense. So in particular, I think Atmi's dialogue got a little awkward at points between last session and this session as well. Where it doesn't feel quite right. So again, I'm wondering like how much of that was in the original script and how much of it was just the translators messing around. Because there are moments where it feels like it is the same character talking, but then they just make some random pop culture jive. Like, are, are they replacing things that don't translate well into English? Is that why that comes up in the original story? Like, that has me more curious about that than the, the rest of the stuff itself, to be honest with you. Uh, but I think from that standpoint, I think the case was fine. I would probably rate it above... Maybe the tutorial case in one. I don't know if I like it more than all of the cases in case one. Since I think like old bag, the final case, minus the 3D manipulations, and everything involving Edgeworth, I think we're pretty strong. So I guess it's more of a question of whether or not I liked it more than the others, which, again, is very subjective at this point. But at least I feel like it's about on par with the first game, which I think is a very safe statement to say. So this is a promising sign so far. The first case was okay. This case was stronger. 
and so far it it feels more in line in terms of uh i guess i would say expectations compared to the first game so that's a good sign however i saw what the third case was by, by that image of the maid cafe and i'm not enthusiastic to say the least to go into that case so we'll see if this ends up being the the low point of the game I mean, honestly, chat, the only way you could really lowball it for me at this point is if we have a whole ace dedicated to Maya again and channeling spirits, which I feel is going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen in this one or the next one, but it feels like they were trying to set up a big plot point for Mia and Maya's mother. So I'm assuming at some point, so that she could become the master of the school, she's going to attempt to channel something and something will go wrong. I'm assuming it's gonna be very similar to the second game in that sense. And maybe we'll finally find Maya's mother, cause she's not dead, we know that, that was raised in this game. So presumably her mother will make a cameo appearance, either literally as a possessed killer, because she tries to stop some kind of channeling, cause they were showing Hawthorne. But I'm not sure if Hawthorne is dead or alive as of this time, so I don't know if that makes sense. That's kind of an assumption on my part. And then I think also I'm not entirely sure if she'll be a vic- She could also be the victim too in the final case. Or the- Technically could also be in the next case, but I'm assuming if it involves Maid Cafe, it has nothing to do with channeling. At least I hope not. Otherwise that would be kind of like the perfect mix mixture of horribleness. Third case syndrome, maybe. Third case is fun and horrifying at the same time. Oh no. Yeah, I'm not I'm not into a lot of those things, chat. So I'm feeling it's gonna be very awkward. So I'm gonna have to put on my best uh best face, I guess, when it comes to doing those things, and we'll see where it goes. But yeah, uh this was solid. I still have a lot of uh Phoenix fatigue from the second game, because I'm gonna be honest with you. Those last two cases back to back in particular were atrocious. So at least I could say I don't hate the game. Like the second game, I would genuinely say I really disliked to the point that I stopped playing the series. But so far, I'm not feeling endeared with the characters. So I'm kind of wondering at this point if I would like some of the spin-offs a bit more since I did do one a long time ago. If some of the other ones are more likable as detectives and or uh, attorneys. I guess we'll see. But anyway, that's for future me to figure out what I want to do. So for now, chat, let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. Hope to see you again in the next part.